Good morning, people. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm waiting for just to make sure everything is firing up and working, working well. Oh, <laughs> look at what I just discovered. I'm moving my camera back across. I thought I heard a bang last night. My the mastery's fallen off. The mystery too. Hmm. Curious. Hello, Janet. How are you? So uh, I need to let people know that this is live streaming to my Facebook page. So some of you. Zot, not... yeah, Xemir. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, I'm live streaming to my Facebook page, and so some people may not wish to have their camera on. Hopefully you will. It's all about conversation, community, helping people out. Uh, and I'm going to, um, for these two introductory sessions on the Windworks Forum, uh, put them out on YouTube. So if you don't want to be involved in or have your talking or anything on that, that's completely fine. Let me know. Um, and once, as of next week, it's just going to be in-house for subscribers but for now i'm just taking it public to start and get some momentum up and build a brass playing community that is uh healthy and helpful the whole idea is inclusiveness talking about issues and a lot of people don't like talking about their issues but the more open we are with things that we're working on uh, the easier it is to fix. There are solutions. And I'm sure Janet won't mind me saying that uh, we're working through some quite serious issues, if that's okay. Um, I'm being very careful with what I'm saying, Janet. <laughs> but basically, um, at the end of the day, the learning process is about creating new neural pathways, not necessarily building, trying to improve old ones. In Janet's case, we're working on some serious reprogramming. You have to. And so I will be talking about all things. Uh, admit, uh, I will get, um, eventually I'll get organized and have someone sitting here who will be able to press the admit button while I'm trying to concentrate on talking. They're new days, so I'm slowly just learning. Uh, Max Ganano, Wayne Bergeron. Good afternoon, my friend. Hey, Greg. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, man. I just thought I'd pop in for a minute. I'm actually running off to a, uh, a little jazz festival here in a little bit, but I saw this was online and I wanted to say hi and listen yeah, to you talk you for a minute. And... Yeah, great. Um, well, I've got to say, while I'm, I'm here, Wayne Max, our friend from Philadelphia, he was up at 6 a.m. this morning to do the UK version of this. So I'm <laughs> most impressed with him. Um, <laughs> how, how are you, Wayne? I know that you had some very serious health issues and you're back in action, which is just sensational. Yeah, uh, I, how's it was life? A, it was a tough, tough couple of years here, but. Uh... Man, oh, man. Man, I, uh, I'm doing doing well now. It's, it's been a long road to recovery on my neck and my chops and, and everything, kind of, you know. I can imagine. I can imagine. How's the industry? It's you. I mean, you're top of the top, so you're obviously going to be working all the time. But how's yeah, everything? Yeah, we're busy. We're busy again here. Uh, you know, finally, and uh, and still doing stuff from home though. I, I, uh, there's still a lot of home recording going on, but most of what I do, big stuff, is is uh, back in the studio with the with orchestra. One of my highlights for those watching was to sit between John Lewis and Wayne for a movie called Monster Trucks. And you sit there and Hollywood happens around you. There's that sound that Hollywood films have. And to hear these guys playing some really complicated stuff. And, and let me say that John Lewis said to me, Wayne Bergeron is one of the only guys on the planet who can sit there and smash the most insane lead playing and then 
sit on second trumpet and sound like an orchestral trumpet player. Oh, now, well, that... I'll have to send him my annual check, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's true. I heard what you were doing that day. It was quasi-orchestral and there was there was some serious things going on. And uh, it, I, I could hear exactly what he was talking about. And Oh, well, that's, that's but... very kind. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's uh, in what we do, as you know, we have to wear a lot of different hats as best we can. Yeah. And be able to fit into different situations. It's amazing to me how many young trumpet players that I meet don't understand that. You know, they might be, and it's okay to be focused on one thing, you know, but I think sometimes you have to, I mean, I never intended to be a classical trumpet player, but I realize that if I want to work, I better be convincing at this. Absolutely. And being able 100%. to play different styles of music. And so, uh, just it's part of the job description kind of now you know well it is it is and the the unfortunately now this might upset a few people sean royce from near carlsbad in california welcome my beautiful friend how are you Trum, trombone I'm... extraordinaire trombone 101 hero in the trombone and brass playing world so good to see your smiling face mate um the universities unfortunately now i'm going to generalize here don't encourage versatility it's it's it can be and i'm not saying all of them so i've got to be very careful no, but no. i've i know personally um a very good friend who's in an inter a band called oh, i won't say names but an international touring band he his lecturer at university said if you're going to keep playing that com commercial stuff you're not going to make it in the orchestra world now this kid sits in orchestras and blows the pants off this stuff with the most beautiful orchestral sound and gets up and plays bebop solos at night, <laughs> right? That should be encouraged, and it just isn't. Yeah, there's people, even at the university where I, where I teach, I just have a couple of students, but it's changed a little bit, but there's one of the teachers there uh, that's a more of an orchestral teacher and a great player, but he told one of the students, no, I don't want you playing in jazz band because it's going to mess up your chops. I, you know, and it's pretty, this person's a good lead player with good chops and, but that is the mentality sometime. And, and, and I guess there could be some truth to that. If you're not playing correctly, if you're not playing efficiently, it, you know, as you know, when we're playing hard and we get tired and then the next morning we go to, to make a sound and go, <laughs> you know, that's a problem, you know, we have, we have to know how to fix that and how to keep it from happening actually, you know, so. Correct, correct. But that being said, I'm sure there are dudes that have got off, you know, obviously orchestral gigs and have the same thing, you know, yeah, they've, yeah. they've blown themselves apart. So, I mean, part of the picking up the trombone and, and playing that, and I play at a very average level, but I like having a toot. You're just you're using different muscles in different ways and and it's all up here. If you've got the sound and you know how to manage the muscles, you can play stylistically. Now, what comes to mind when I say that was Winton Marsalis. Um, he said that, and I don't know whether this is still the case now, and I don't know how much uh, or, or classical playing he's doing, but back when he was doing heaps of that piccolo orchestral playing and stuff, he'd go, he wouldn't play jazz for three weeks if he had a an orchestral classical gig coming up, just to completely live in the musical zone and the technical zone of playing classically uh versus if he's in jazz land you know it's a, it's a different ball game so it's interesting isn't it yeah 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 well even people that play the brandenburg and things like that if they're getting ready to do that performance they will shy away from anything else well, other than getting into that mode you know so i understand all of, all of all of that you know there is a you know we have 100 percent if you're going to do that, you're going to live that, aren't you? You know, you're yeah. not going to go out and play a, you know, four set bebop gig the night before playing the brand. I do have to say, you know, I was playing with the Pacific Symphony one time when we were doing some children's concerts and we had two concerts in the morning and this guy, Burnett Dillon, who's kind of a retired trumpet player now, he moved out of state, but great, great trumpet player, played on a lot of film stuff. And I heard him play, we just played the, uh, the first movement of the Brandenburg along with this other pop stuff and he did it two concerts in a row and then played all the other stuff too, the pop stuff, 
and uh, and I was there just to assist, you know. And then he played it again, and he never he didn't miss one note two concerts three days in a row. That's what's possible. Yeah. And um, for for many reasons, like doing this stuff now with with my website, it's all developing. I'm learning, and it's it's really exciting. And this having this chat right now, and and having you, Wayne, and and Sean. And you know Max and Janet as well, and uh, lots of other little names that I can see. But having you guys here as part of this is is super duper exciting. The professional brain, the professional mindset, everyone can have. This is why it's important having you guys here. It's awesome because you guys have professional mindsets, and I don't. It doesn't matter what style of play you are, whether you're first day beginner been playing for 20 years three to morning away <laughs> discussed after university frustrated got married had kids coming back or dedicated you know player career player everyone can have a professional mindset and what is that based on what the sound that you want to create and your understanding of the mechanics the understanding of the the system and if you know what it feels like to play efficiently most people, I think you'd agree, Wayne, most people don't actually know what it feels like to play efficiently because from day one, they've been what I call burning the pizza, creating too much combustion, too much energy, and it's not being converted to sound. So what happens? It builds up back in the throat and all these muscles that aren't required have been activated. That's very um, true. Man. Too much energy. So if we understand the feeling of playing efficiently, how to go about it based on an understanding of how the system works, then we can develop players that I'm, I'm teaching my girlfriend's eight year old son. I've taught a lot of little kids before. And if they ever start to elevate and push unnecessarily, no, but, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> uh, 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 I'll get them to sit there with their eyes closed and just go, mm, and just hum. Right now, that's not to say that you you don't engage more than that when you're playing bloody um, uh, what's the jazz, is it jazz police <laughs> the uh, the Gordon Goodwin oh, Tart yeah. whatever any any it doesn't mean to say that the body's not involved. I remember when we played together for that Melbourne Brass Festival, and Shane Gillard asked you about you know upper register playing, and he's you like, man. It, hard work it takes work it does take work but it doesn't have to be inhibitive over exertion you're a very blooming balanced play you, you create the right energy and you convert that energy to sound very simple concept don't when over I when i was young though talking about what you're talking about is the over com over compression yeah and so that's why we you know we get ruptured uh hernias in our neck i saw this kind of all right this thing you know but when i was young i had i had uh natural high chops when i was young yeah so my range is the same as it was when i was 12. <laughs> but the way i played the way i was accessing those notes if you could have seen me was like this you're like yeah you know and something's got to give and i was right. creating upper body tension and so my lorenzo seal uh, got ruptured and it yep. happens to a lot of trumpet players maybe even some people here deal with this a little, little bit but a lot of oboe players and people that play high compression instruments yeah and uh and so i've spent my whole life <laughs> you're trying to play easier especially as i get older right you know and just trying to become more and i think the reason i can still play fairly uh, strong is because i made that change at some point in my life and started realizing okay i'm you know when you're young and strong, you can blow the bell off the thing and maybe you can handle all that, but eventually the reed gets tired and messed up and you have to learn how to make all this function well, uh, more efficiently, I, you know? Absolutely. Well, that's that's the, the, the high percentage of people that I work with are either touring sort of pros that are just killing themselves and frustrated with playing, almost tired of playing because they're just, they're killing themselves, um, or just people 40 years over. Because as you say, the young guns, no problem. There's no problem until you find a problem. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then, so my, my kind of role is to try and stop people from going there in the first place. 
and with really simple drills. And a lot of people look at what I'm doing and go, what? You're a nutcase. Well, okay, I probably am a nutcase, but what I'm that, saying... That, part, that part's true. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I own it. Don't you worry about that. Um, but it's so so crucial to go... One of my mantras, Wayne, is... is don't, let's not uh, involve any unnecessary or involuntary muscular activation. Let's just use what we need. So I, I, I spend a lot of time just working passively after a nice breath and relaxing the body, creating passive energy and converting that to sound and then gradually going up through the register and looking, here's my favourite teaching tool. Now, you might not have one of these in your teaching kit, but I recommend everyone get one. It's a magnifying glass. What's that about? It's looking through the system and going, what's engaging that we don't need, right? Because what we're doing is developing a feeling of efficiency and then go all of a sudden, I could have people going with eyes closed, nice breath, nothing complicated. Mm. And one of my mantras is, I want the lips to interact with the air as if they're the vocal cords. Now the science is slightly different, but that's neither here nor there. I don't want you to engage more. If I sit here now, it's seven o'clock in the morning and I'll sit here and wake up my neighbours. I'm in a lovely apartment here in Coolum Beach, very much like Carlsbad, Mr. Roish, by the beach, beautiful sunny coast. I'll sit here and just hum. And I'm not blowing. Why? Because I've pulled back. Here's my second favourite tool. For the time being, let's just pull the bow back. Nothing complicated. No, no strategy here. And I can work on the inhalation because a lot of people start to tighten up the, the moment they start energizing the lungs. I call it energizing the lungs because when you say breathing, <laughs> there's a lot of breathing techniques out there and it can get confusing, right? So I've got different strategies that I'll, I'll work through as we go through today. But let's get air into the lungs. That's where the air goes. You can breathe in through the nose, but it's slower, right? I, I do an exercise called the body's concert hall where we get the back of the tongue out of the way. So we open up the sound column in the body and go, there's the energy. We've created the energy simply by expanding the rib cage, expanding the, the intercostal muscles will expand as we take a breath in. Then let's just let go of it, <laughs> right? And if we can use that, passive approach on a low C, that's a great place to start. We're building a really efficient foundation. And I've actually got a term called the no C. <laughs> I haven't put it on the website yet, but let's play a bunch of no C's or no B flats for those wonderful trombone players out there, right? Let's play with the right process, energy conversion to sound. We're not blowing through the horn. We're energizing the air that's already in there making it move. There's air particles here. And when I do that, they bounce and then they bounce back. And apparently 5% of the energy that we use gets emitted in sound. Some gets lost to uh, friction on the wall of the pipe. And the rest of it just goes to keeping that process of forward and back, body instrument, body instrument system alive. And of course, eventually, I start getting softer because I'm not engaging the body. That's where the body's role begins. We start to engage to maintain volume. And of course, then there's the whole, uh, we start getting higher. So the minute we start thinking about getting into the upper register, everything starts to elevate, tighten up, push. Well, we can do that, and most people do, but why? Which comes from here. So I'll sit here and play my singing low C. Then I'll go. It doesn't sound very good. It's not about sound. It's not a performance. It's a psychological exercise to. Oh, and that's all. And she could have been persuaded to overlook the investor's past. Say for a substantial cash payment. Hey, hey, Jim. Joking, right? This woman, she's squeezing. Hey, hey. Payment. Like I'm liking the sound of this. Let's talk. <laughs> substantial sounds <laughs> good. 
shit. Hey, uh, Jim, I think your microphone might be on there, my friend, which is fine. Is it on or off? It's uh, on, but uh, if you could just mute that for a second. And I, I will. will. I will mm-hmm. get to you about that substantial hey, Greg, soon. Sorry to interrupt, sorry to interrupt right, you. Mike. I want to say bye. I got to run. I got to go get in the shower. I do that once a month, whether needed or not. And, please, uh, turn your, please turn your camera off. That would be be great. <laughs> hey, um, Wayne, <laughs> greatest respect to you. You're sharing your career, everything. It's great to see you again. Um, you I know too, we're man. all really wrapped and privileged to have a chat to you here. And have a great gig. And if that, I oh know that Davies clown's over here at the moment. I'm catching up with him this week. So um, my, my dear friend, Tim, another crazy Aussie. So um, I'll get all the inside goss as to what you've been up to. <laughs> all right, buddy. I will see. I'll see. Nice seeing everybody. I wish I could stay, but I wanted to say hi. Keep up the great work, Greg. Thank you, Wayne. Take care, Best brother. wishes, my friend. Guys, all the best. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Um, so basically what, and, and Wayne, alluded to it just there even for players that are really young instinctively my nephew hey alex you want to play trumpet here's a trumpet first thing he does pick it up (gasps) why (laughs) why does he do that it's just the human um idea of what is required to make sound on a brass instrument you know we think that we have to blow the thing maybe because we've seen someone do it cheeks blowing out and they copy that (laughs) what's this this idea the whole golf thing everyone wants to hit the ball really hard well how about don't do that how about have timing and flow and make good contact with the ball and then it will go further so um sean how are things in in uh, the west coast of the USA? And have you uh, how's your course going? What are you up to? What are the latest learning and teaching things that are keeping you inspired? Um, yeah, what's happening? Well, it's great to see you, my friend. Um, no, we're we're doing well, and I uh, I know with all the crappiness with covid times it's been amazing i feel like i've completely relearned how to play and and so much i owe to you from your visit with you know just all the things we talked about and just realizing i feel like the more i learn the more i realize i'm working way harder than i need to and and um and just taking a step back and really simplifying and you know i just I had no idea how much I was overworking, like with the, especially the compression thing, yep. you know, and, and, and also how much just misinformation or not even misinformation, but I think stuff that's just regurgitated that we've heard for 50 years, like the more air, more air, like that solves every brass problem, <laughs> you know, and, and it's been amazing to realize, like to get the magnifying glass and zoom in and realizing like, wow, it's actually that complete opposite. It's very little air. And, you know, the more I feel like I, I relax and let go, um, you know, it's just, it's so exciting because I feel like I've improved so much, um, which also just as a teacher it has profoundly affected stuff, you know? Yes, this is a live stream meeting and it's on trumpet and this you don't have to go right now. Okay, it could be a I little bit. To, I need to somehow, uh, make sure microphones are switched off at the at the start. There might be a way of doing that setting up. This is all new. Sorry, sorry, Sean. Um, it's so counterintuitive and so against what we've been taught, as you say, for 50 or 100 years. Um, and thankfully, there's people like yourself, uh, and if I do say so myself, <laughs> people like us that are pulling it apart, exploring it, questioning and going, hang on a minute. And I I, I suggest in in your case and in a lot of people's cases, we look because what we're being told doesn't work. Max, 
you know, is here. Max played for years and years and he's a great educator, um, runs huge band programs and been doing it for years. And and why is he a Windworks subscriber? Why did he fly to New York to come to my masterclass? Because for years, practice, playing, methods, routines, got to get stronger. Buzz your lips together, blow faster to play higher. All this stuff that's just out there. And it's great if it works for you until it doesn't, <laughs> right? Or when you start having problems and you go, there's a problem, I don't know why I'm struggling, but I'm struggling. There's something going wrong. I don't know what's going wrong because I've never thought about it, so I can't fix it. And that's why, even though I get bagged often for being too analytical, tell the um, mechanics at the Mercedes Formula One factory that they're too analytical. <coughs> Focus on the mechanics and figure out how to get the most efficient result from the, from the, the machine that you've got. You know, I, I came up with a term the other day, um, high performance vessel. We want to be a high performance vessel, the vessel being the musical idea. At the end of the day, we've got a musical message that we want to get through. We're a vessel of a musical idea and we want to get it through and we want to be efficient and we want to be high performance. That doesn't mean super duper strong. It means efficient, <laughs> right? You can have a, you can have an efficient, 200 cc motorbike or you can have an efficient you know formula one car so where we have to break it down and look at what are the problems what can i do what can i sometimes do what can't i do and the what i can do might simply be come into the practice room and get the instrument out of the case <laughs> right i can do that no problem a lot of people feel anxiety before they come into the practice room. I don't know what I'm going to practice. I don't know how to practice. I don't know what I'm working on. I'm talking from experience, my own experience. Confusion, so many methods. What do I have to work on? But if you can have a, just a list of checkpoints, what can I do? Well, can I, am I cool? Am I calm? Am I excited about my practice routine? I hope so. If you're not, come and talk to me. I'll get you excited about it, right? We should be excited about it. Can't wait to play. Love the feeling of it. And then we go, okay, well, I'm, I'm excited. Great, got my instrument, it's clean. We're ready to play. Okay, what's the first thing we need to do? Well, we need to create energy, pull that bow back. Breath in, we can do it slowly through the nose. Okay, at the top of the breath, did the throat close off? It happens really easily. So we, we've got to open that up. What does it feel like? Open throat. I was saying last night, we had a ripper session last night. So I'm going to do two of these. Um, the UK sort of Europe, 7pm on my Sunday. And then this. 7 a.m. Monday morning. What a great way to start the week. I got up at five o'clock and went for a run. I'm working. I ran 5K for the first time a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to get healthier and run more. So yay me. Always constantly trying to work on something. Energize the lungs as we're breathing in. It's like a roller coaster going up. Roller coaster going up. We're breathing in. We open up down here. This is part of your instrument. People don't think about this. Oh, back around here, the concert hall. It's part of the instrument. So if we open it up, there's the energizing the lungs. Then we've got to let that energy come out. Drop, let it move. Convert that energy to sound. Don't create more energy than is required to um, create sound, convert the energy to sound. Don't burn the pizza. Don't create too much combustion or compression as Wayne was saying. And, and Sean blowing too hard. Everything backs up perforated larynxes, hernias, right? Don't need to do it. We don't need to do it again. I, I just cop Greg, 
trumpet playing is not like t- talking, humming, or singing. It's a lot harder. No, it's not. Is playing a low C playing the trumpet? Yes. <laughs> right. So if I energize the lungs and hum, mm, I want the lips to interact with the air as if they're the vocal cords. Pretty simple concept. As if they're the vocal cords. As if they're the vocal cords. Not they are the vocal cords. They're not. Slightly different. But that doesn't matter. I want the feeling. If we can get that down, we're developing a really healthy and efficient foundation. What do you need when you're building a building? A skyscraper. You need a really, really strong foundation. And what is our foundation built on? The understanding of the mechanics of the system and the feeling sensation and psychology and and understanding what it feels like and then all of a sudden if we start to elevate the abdominals too much the throat starts to close off that's a real problem when we start to go into the higher register the body starts to activate the middle of the lips start to pinch down they're super strong if everyone sat there and just squeeze your lips together as hard as you can don't let the air through You cannot blow them apart. You cannot blow them apart. The lips are stronger than the body. Right? So we've constantly got this battle of using the abdominals to force against the chops to try and make the instrument work. What's this got to do with energizing the air that's in this pipe here? And air molecules are not made of meat, ball bearings, (laughs) as far as I know. So to move air particles, there's the energy. Create the energy, convert the energy to sound. Don't burn the pizza. Don't have too much heat, too much combustion, too much energy in the system. Only have the energy that that's required to play whatever pattern it is that we require. Now, of course, if you're going to play a long, loud passage, you're going to need to have a great breath. Right, but you still don't want to over exert. Um, so what are you working on, Sean? Uh, in particular, what what's the next sort of phase, or are you just are you in just enjoying the playing mode, or are you still in data collection mode? Oh, Sean's frozen. So well. Oh. While we're uh, <laughs> unlock, the whole concept of what I'm doing here, is we're going to, I'm going to use the forum a lot more. <clears throat> I've been avoiding getting on the forum. I want um, people to be talking. Uh, about the there. Oh, here we go. I, 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 I want to, oh, I want people to be talking amongst themselves instead of me getting in the way and <laughs> yak 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 i can tend to talk too much um but i'm going to use the forum as a means to talk about topics and i'm going to do this every single week um so if there's anyone here now again people are very reluctant <coughs> to share their problems especially if you're a professional player or a teacher it's a sign of weakness we should never stop learning as a professional player or a teacher, we should never, ever, ever stop learning. And that might be, Greg, I would get you to consider that what you're saying is incorrect. Okay, let's talk about it, (laughs) right? What problem do you have with what I'm saying? What's the issue with what I'm saying? And we can talk about it. Because again, as you might've seen in one of my videos, if someone came up and said to me, I like what you're doing, Greg, it's great, but I'd get you to consider that if you put the trumpet to your ear and you squint, it's going to be easier and sound better. I'd be the first person to try it. And I'd be more than happy to get onto mysterytomastery.com and do a video and go, forget everything I've ever said, <laughs> right? There's a, there's a new way of playing. It's not quite what you'd expect. You wouldn't believe it works, but guess what? It does. And I've got to do demonstrating it on one of my videos. He sent it to me after me saying that at a masterclass. <coughs> You've got to be open-minded. We don't, we don't, no one knows everything. And there might be new techniques, ways of doing it. Greg, I'd get you to consider blah, 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 blah. Terrific. 
So, uh, Sean, you, you, you broke um, up a little bit before. I was just wondering, are you in data collection technical development mode at the moment or are you repertoire material performing uh, or a bit of both? Where are you at performance wise? I'm doing way more data collection. Right. And um, one thing I recently started experimenting with is I had some just some major tension things going on in my left hand. So one of the things I've been working on is, is just sitting, finding a really great healthy balance point and really bringing the horn up to my face. And one of the habits I'd gotten into for, I think just because I was playing so much was holding my horn up with both arms instead of just really my left arm. So my slide was really free. And, um, and I think by doing that, I also started using a lot more tension, like white knuckle, you know, like pressing the instrument. And so I got this thing called an ergo bone. It's from Finland. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's this, this thing that it hooks onto your slide and it, it kind of fits. It's just like a, it looks kind of like a pogo stick in a way. Um, and it holds your, the weight of your horn up. So I'd really just literally hold the horn like with my left hand, I mean, I could hold it with two fingers and it, it holds the weight up. And now my slide is, is perfectly free. Love it. And um, man, I've only used it for like three days, but the, I feel <clears throat> like I've just peeled, peeled like onion away of layers of tension that I had no idea. And so, you know, feeling like the concert hall without having all that upper body tension so different. I mean, so different. And, you know, I realized how much, like, I feel like some of my playing, especially when I would get anxious right. in a performance or something, I felt like I was bracing for a car accident. Like my, my muscles, you know, I mean, as far as sheer force of overblowing mm. and it's absolutely incredible that the more I, I just relax all that, then, you know, like what you said before, the work is, is the inhalation and then you just release it. And now by not having all that extra, you know, tension, I feel like my breaths in are double the amount of air, you know, without trying though. I mean, like it's, it's just so much easier. Love. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's talk about it being excited to, to play. I, I feel like I'm a beginner. In, in so many ways where stuff that you've said and that I've, I've discovered, I feel like I know it's the truth, but, but when you're battling all these old mantras that people said for, you know, that I heard that I just held as like the Bible, I'm realizing so much. I mean, it's, it's just amazing to re-question pretty much everything. And, okay. um, but it's, it's so exciting because it's, it's working, it's simple and you can repeat it. You know, and it's not like you're starting completely over each, you know, or, or that you're doing like voodoo practicing, you're praying to the gods that your lips will work, you know, and why did it work yesterday? And now I can't get, you know, right. It's just so fr frustrating to be on that path. So it's, it's really been amazing. That's you just, um, you just mentioned something they talk about in Zen in the art, Zen in the art of archery is relying on favorable conditions. In other words, if my chops feel great and and the stars are aligned and the the moon and the tide and the wind and everything is perfect, I might have a good day, right? But right. if I don't have a good day, I can't create a good day. Where, as you, you said, the word repeatability. And it's all one of the big things that you would have experienced, of course, from doing this. It's the sensation. It's the feeling. And then you go, well, I understand in theory, and I said it a lot last night, this must work. Even though the brain wants to engage and elevate and tighten because we're going to play, logic says, I don't have to. But then you go to play and the brain sends the instruction to tighten because that's the circuitry that you've got. <laughs> it's, the, it's the pathways that are already built. So we have to do that. And then, so the next thing is, of course, the breath and, and, and more and more and more I'm talking about this is the energy. And we want to convert the energy of the breath into sound, 
not engage muscles that aren't required because that takes energy as well. So if we can go, let's not engage here, whilst it feels different, this must work, right? So as you say, it, it can feel like we're doing crazy exercises that un, are unrelated to playing, but it's so far from the truth. If you sit there, the whole concept of the invitation, mm, drop the body, convert the energy that we took from the breath into sound using the voice, and, and just tell yourself, that's what I want to feel like when I'm playing. That's what I want to feel like when I'm playing, right? And you go, okay, I, I work a lot more. You pick up the horn and start playing and you feel elevation, you feel tightness, you feel pinch and push. Then you go, well, okay, I can feel the difference. Hashtag point of difference. We know that we don't need to do all that engagement but I'm wired to do it. But then when you've got the understanding and that feeling of, wow, check this out, rotate a cuff, elbow, instrument, this arm should be as loose as, you know, do whatever you like with it. And it's fear. And you said anxiety. All of a sudden, we use the body to compensate because all of a sudden there's a few butterflies or whatever bit of doubt you can't have confidence and doubt at the same time they don't coexist so if there's doubt doubt is fight and flight right out let's do whatever we can to get the job done that means engage let's guarantee that this note's going to happen and if you're under pressure it's pretty hard to sit there and go ah oh, this will work mm, <laughs> right but if we're confident in our technical ability and our musical message, there we go. No. There it is. Why, why engage? Why use what we don't have to use? And this freaks people out. So passive, meaning inactive, meaning no abdominal contraction whatsoever, just an expansion and a drop, a release, Mm -hmm. uh, you can create lots of sound from doing nothing. <coughs> then changing pitch. <laughs> That's all passive. No body engagement. Breathe. Release. Relax, <laughs> right? It's so counterintuitive to what we we want to do instinctively or what we're taught to do, right? So then when we have used these training um, things that you can, you can use, um, welcome, William. <clears throat> I'm seeing William. Can you just um, turn your microphone off, please? Um, I'm, I'm still learning about Zoom, <laughs> the learning process and errors. I'll slowly <laughs> get it sorted out. But um, I'm still interested in this cash uh, conversation from before. <laughs> um, so, again, does anyone have any, any questions, any dramas with their playing, anything that you'd like to share? Again, talking about issues is not weakness it's the desire to improve right we're all we've all got our own circuitry <coughs> we've all got our own wiring and we can change it if we want to improve right but we can't reject our current wiring all we can do is understanding it and then go what's the result let me tell you on friday I played the best golf shots in history, hole after hole after hole for me, left-handed, right? No mean feet, left-handed, feels ridiculous. Still, played the best shots I ever have, went out and played a competition on Saturday, all gone. <laughs> Never played worse. Up, down, crash. This is the learning process. I learned more on the Saturday from having a bad day 
than what I learned on the Friday, having a great day. Don't learn from the great days. You learn from the hard days where nothing works. The errors. Michael, I see a hand up. <laughs> Greg, it's an honor to speak to you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you and see you wonderfully, my friend. Where do we find you the uh, this afternoon? Well, I've, I've, I feel like I kind of need to start over with your program because I, I keep you know, working up to a point and then everything just kind of crashes. Uh, I'm a, a very seasoned freelancer and uh, we have July 4th coming up, which means I've got to play for about six hours that day. And uh, I'm a little concerned about getting through it because I've always had so much tension in my playing that I just can't get through a long day like that. Now, normally I'm playing fourth horn, bottom of the section. I'm, I'm like bass trombone for a horn player. And I love doing that. But occasionally I have to play high for an extended length and I just can't do it. There's a lot of issues here. It's uh, how often, and you said you've got six hours. How often do you have, have that demand? Not very often. No, not no. very often. Right. So right. we've got to prepare. It's, it's, it's having a game plan and going, how am I going to get through this? Because what, what you're talking about in the efficiency and rewiring, whilst it's possible, and we can start doing the invitations of the drills, humming and ah, ooh, and aperture corners and all the, uh, what's the blooming term I'm after, the sympathetic oscillation of the, the oscillator and all this stuff. It takes time and repetition of the invitations of the drills for the subconscious <laughs> mind to actually embrace them and engage them automatically, subconsciously. That's so right. what we can do, there's two things leading up to 4th of July. We've got a couple of weeks and go, right out. So I need to be stronger. And this is one of the big issues. I've got to be stronger. Mm -hmm. To which I go, when, when people in Texas marching bands at universities go, Greg, how do we get stronger? I have heart palpitations and go, are you beep, kidding me? You guys are the strongest players on the planet. You do not need to be stronger. You need to be more efficient. Stop playing right. so hard, right? So with that right. being said, let's say we've got a tank of gas. We're going into the 4th of July. We've been doing all nice, efficient drills and working on our harmonics up and working on shape and working on backing off and opening up the, the aperture a little bit. Stop burning the pizza. Then, so we've been working on the drills. Then the day comes every single chart what can i do less one percent rule what can i back off this 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 pattern here it probably doesn't matter if i'm playing at 45 percent rather than 50 percent or 30 percent more than 40 percent where can i back off because quite often right. the overexertion reduces the projection the resonance muscles are getting involved in dampening the sound rather than uh, in creating more sound, the extra effort can diminish the sound, which is a, another counterintuitive kind of thing. So I'd be getting there and literally do this. I could do a whole talk on what I'm about to, to say to you, but even before some, some phrases, <clears throat> if you sit there and just, mm, no one will hear you. Mm, just, it's a, little reminder when i come in with this next phrase dum, da -dum, dum, 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 dee, whatever it is let's make it feel like that let's not get caught up in the moment and start and right i'm playing i'm doing a gig and get really active don't do that pull back and go i know and this is where the the practice room and the gig environment becomes so important because it's called um hell gelper famous jazz piano player with all the jazz greats he talks about chaos the ear gets onto the gig and it can't hear what it hears in the practice room because you've got three other horn players and you've got timpanis and snare drums and cymbals and yeah. trumpets those damn trumpets 
and, and <laughs> surrounded by chaos and we can't hear the sound that you hear in the practice room. So what does everyone want to do? Make sure I can hear myself. I'm going to play harder. So we yep. get on the gig and play harder than how we practice. Imagine the Olympic runner who gets onto the Olympics and starts running harder than what they did in their training. They're not going to get to the end of the damn race, right? So <laughs> the, my, my suggestion is to really work on the, the absolute fundamental foundations of the, the expansion and the reduction, the hum, the efficiency of sound creation, even if it's just on one note or the no C, you know, and just mm -hmm. training the body, feel like this, feel like this, open, dropped, relaxed. The sensation is so uh, desirable compared to everything's elevated and pushing like let's right. not do that right and eventually and i'm talking from experience myself here from all the invitations and i wasn't using the term back when this actually this moment happened it's years ago but i'm i'm learning to energize the body and relax let go and let the notes speak and i'm on a gig live television and i recognized at this point I'm about to play and my brain goes, hang on a minute. Whoa, I'm confused. You've been telling me time and time and time again to not do that. And now you're about to do it. Why are you going to do that? So all of a sudden your own mind starts to question based on the information that you've been almost subliminally feeding the, the, the circuitry, you know, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're having this internal conversation. You go, you know, Greg 1.0 is talking to Greg 2.0 going, yeah, you're right. You know, what, why, why am I going to do that? Let's not do that. What have you been doing in the practice room? Well, I've been doing this now. When does that moment come when you're ready and prepared to surrender to process in the heat of battle? When have you got the confidence? As I said before, you can't have confidence and doubt at the same time. Right? So you've got to right. have belief in your ability to execute successfully. Otherwise, you're not going to let go on the gig. You're going to have right. to keep engaging because that's what the that's the circuitry that you've got that you can rely upon to get the gig done. So making that transition on performance from practice room to gig can be daunting. Now, if you're playing tutti fourth, it's 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 unison. It's not going to oh, I suppose. <laughs> In a way, if you're playing unison, if anything happens to go wrong, it's going to stick out more than if there's <laughs> more different notes. But where is that moment where you're prepared to just let go and go, of course, this will work. I know the shape of the note. I know the energy is going to be there. This must work. In fact, it can't not work. If the shape is right and there's energy flowing through it, it must work. <laughs> right? Yeah. So we want to get to that point of not just confidence, but absolute, I can't not do this. I can sit here. I'll probably stuff it up. And... I did. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's a harmonic between friends, but I can <laughs> sit and, and, and play a high C without thinking about it. I can't hit a golf ball straight down the middle of a fairway without thinking about it. I can hit 200 and something meters, 210 that's about 230 yards when i hit a good one dead straight right i'm left-handed i mean i'm doing it left-handed i'm not as strong as right-handed i'm never going to hit as far as i would right-handed but that's half the point is that i want to rely on strength i want to rely on technique you know alignment balance flow and then slowly add energy but i did a trial hit recently right-handed and wow i my two years of training a left-handed swing has transferred to my right-handed swing and I haven't done it in years. And I got back and everything had transferred over and hit the longest, straightest ball ever. And Greg stands on driving range going, wow. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> what did I do there? And how is that different to my left-handed? It's all about the feeling, the sensation, the understanding of the system. We get, we get the technique, right. Then add power but we don't want to add too much power. We just add what's required to get the result. 
So again, I'd be saying do lots of drills, lots of um, the most efficient 1% rule practice that you can. Then draw a line through the practice day and go, right, oh, I've got to work on repertoire. Of course, I've got to, can't deny there's muscle strength required, but it's not all about that. It's about condition and efficiency. And then uh, I got punched in the mouth <laughs> years ago, uh, just out at a bar and a girl was being abused by her boyfriend and I told him in no uncertain terms to stop. And apparently he came running around through the pub, came up, tapped me on the shoulder and I've turned around and he's just gone smack. And I couldn't play, I thought my career was over, right? Then after three months, I've gone, no, 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 no. Something's not right here. I, my, I'm not ready for my career to be over. And I happened to be walked past, I walked past the sports injury clinic. And I thought, what have I got to lose? I'll walk in there. And I said to the guy at the counter, I'm a professional trumpet player. I got punched in the mouth. I can't play anymore. And he's given me this weird look, room full of people. He's on the phone, busy. And, and then he got off the phone and said, what did you say? And I'm like, dude, I'm really, <laughs> really sorry. I don't want to waste your time. I'm a professional trumpet player. I got punched. I can't play. I've got this bump in my lip, hematoma, blood blister in the middle of my lip. He goes, come with me. Okay. So I went into the side room and he got the, the ultrasound thing out and the gel and starts straight away. I'm like, that's really weird. He's busy. There's people there and I'm straight in, in front of everyone. And he goes, oh. you know, Joe O'Callaghan, who's a great friend of mine, trombone player. I said, yeah, he was the um, MC at my wedding. He goes, yeah, well, I'm a trombone player. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so this physio is a goddamn trombone player. And he yeah. put me on a, uh, a bunch of exercises, a bunch of treatment over about a month, work up take the next couple of weeks off, just do these stretches, all different sorts of stuff. Then I had um, uh, the Australian equivalent of baseball is cricket. And we had the Alan Border Medal, a live TV awards show coming up. And I've gone from not playing for three months and broken embouchure. And he goes, we'll get you there. We'll get you there. You'll be all right. Don't play for the next two weeks. Then the following, the third week after elect electric pads, electric shock sort of stuff. He goes, right, long tones, low register. Don't over, you know, don't just play, but don't play too much. Just get the horn on the face, rest, play, rest, play, rest, play. Slowly start to build it up. Then I went in the following week, more treatment. Right, oh, build up, build up, build up. But don't forget, he's a sports injury physio. Monday, do this. Tuesday, do this. Thursday, Wednesday, expand. Thursday, go through the range that you can without breaking yourself. Friday, taper off, right? So work up, work up, work up. The day before, taper off. Let the muscles just bloom. And he said on the Thursday, go sick, book in, right? Without damaging yourself, but go as far as you can. Then Friday, taper off, rest up, flapping, blood circulation, a little bit of low impact, low playing. Saturday, day of the gig, get up, do a nice loose warm up, and then put it away for a couple of hours, go and do the gig. And I sat at the gig and played. It wasn't, thankfully, it wasn't a super demanding, high impact lead trumpet gig. It was nothing more than a high C sort of thing and not a lot of playing, but exposed and don't miss sort of thing. And I got through the gig. So the, that whole story is about muscle rebuilding, but preparation for a performance performance management going in and I, I was sitting on that gig going, I don't need to play that thing uh, and try and sound like Doc Severinsen. I don't need to do that. Get the job done. Just sit there, do the minimum amount required to get the job done. Right. And then the next one, it's efficiency. It's just saving. We've all got a gas tank and the energy eventually runs out. So we don't want to run out too soon. So I'd be right, working, right. working, working, working smart, the efficiency drills, and then uh, playing, getting the repertoire and stuff down. But the day before, <clears> the <throat> gig, 
And then on the day, just get there and just find the pieces that you can be a bit more efficient on. And, you know, you've got six hours. So let's, and the humming thing, let me say it again. I had two sessions of six recording sessions, two days in a row when I moved up here to Queensland. And I hadn't been playing much. I, I moved up here to work on Windworks and get this happening. And 25 years of working in the full-time Melbourne music scene was enough for me. I was done. And another Melbourne winter would have killed me. <laughs> so I wanted the beach. So I moved up here and then all of a sudden I get called to do, this is the opening music for the Commonwealth Games. So it's full orchestra, scary gig. How am I going to do this? Well, number one, don't go in and try and be a hero on the first chart. And so everyone goes, oh, this guy can play. Everything's fine. I know myself. I would have got up there, blown the absolute ring out of it to go, oh, okay, he can play. Good. Relax now. And I would have been tied for the next session and the two sessions that day and the three sessions the following day. Greg, don't do that. So what did I do? Mm, and this ties into something Sean was talking about before. If there's anxiety, I was humming to remind myself to not overblow. Just play like that. Mm, that feeling, open, relaxed, free. And the anxiety went away. The butterflies went away. That's weird. <laughs> then I'm about to sit in the orchestra. First takes coming up, butterflies start again. Mm, they went away again. That's weird. <laughs> right? So I'm talking to a person up here. She's a healer and spiritual kind of person. And I said, I had this amazing experience that I had a bit of anxiety going on. And I hummed and it disappeared. She, oh, that's the vagus nerve. Put your hand up if you've heard of the vagus nerve. I hadn't. <laughs> Right, great. So apparently, anxiety everything tightens up. That's the fight and flight, you know, fear thing kicking in. And when you hum, sort of vibration, freedom, it releases serotonin, serotonin, calming. So all of a sudden, you start and feel relaxed. And I've gone, okay, now I've never done meditation in my life, but meditation now makes a lot more sense to me. All these cultures all over the world doing, mm, you know, <laughs> right? All of a sudden yep. it makes yep. sense. Clarity of mind. And and so that was a, a pretty wild experience, but I had to get through the the two days of sessions. And let me tell you, I got a phone call from the, the, the principal trumpet player of the orchestra who I wasn't there because I was doing the commercial lead stuff. And she said, the dudes in the section still can't understand how you did what you did by the end of the last session and it was high loud repetitive you know, lots of takes and i was sitting there loving it confident chops were fresh <laughs> after two days of playing because i hadn't been trying to blow the house down a free relaxed resonant body is going to project more imagine if you put your hand on a timpani or your hand on a cello while they're playing. It dampens the vibration, so it reduces the projection. 1% mm. rule. Can we let 1% go to get 1% more sound? Everyone tries to activate to get more sound. No, <laughs> don't. Let go to get more sound. What can we not engage rather than burn the pizza, overcook, dampen <laughs> sound, right? And it's, yep. it's fascinating, the whole psychology behind it. How can I let the body, how much sound can I get from the body? And this is where the whole Singing Sea series came from. It was based on how much sound can I get from my voice? I've never had a singing lesson. But how much sound can I get from my body by doing less? I remember just sitting there. Mm -hmm. shaking everything about what can i let go of what can i let go of no. try and open up what can i open up can i open up any more right yeah. more more for less more result less work counterintuitive 
We try to engage more to get more sound and you ultimately get less sound because you dampen the system. It's wild. So the more we can pull back, um, resonate, open up, loosen up, transfer that energy. Um, I said last night, um, I'm working on, if there's anyone here that does graphic design, let's do a contra deal. I'll um, give you a free lesson. If you can do a logo for me, Janet, really? Because I, um, the Singing Sea series. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, there's a similarity there. Big bell, big mouth. That's the sound. I want, ah, oh, coming out through the bell. I want to get the, rid of the instrument. There's no instrument. There's just. <laughs> So you get the concept. It's just what energy can we create from the body and keep the open resonance and not Arnold Jacobs danger lies in pushing against the resistance of the instrument. Let's mm -hmm. not push against it. Let's give it everything it needs to get the right, the result that we want in the most efficient manner. And that's, that's so talk, talking about talking about efficiency. I think I naturally do that with my voice. I've, I've have had some vocal training when I was in college. And uh, for lack of a better phrase, I'd been gifted with uh, a, quite a voice that I don't really know what to do with. But I can fill my entire house with sound easily with my voice. I can and hear I, that. So you, you, you're, you're saying I need to be able to do that with the horn. 100%. 100%. Okay. Exactly the same feeling now if, if i get you to do the body's concert hall breath finger between the teeth really soft really slow low now notice and we did this last night and someone elevated as well let's not mm -hmm. move the torso let's keep the torso oh. dropped watch watch my torso when i do it rotate a cuff elbow head doesn't move torso doesn't move <laughs> then expand the lungs Can you do that really softly and slowly? Everyone feel free to join in. Eyes closed. Softly, slowly. So doing that lowers the back of the tongue, mm -hmm. opens the throat up. Is that a familiar feeling or a foreign feeling? Foreign. That's what I feel like when I'm playing everything. Right? Oh. Uh, yep. Do this for me. Literally do this. And I'm adding this to the Singing Sea series. Oh, uh, yes. you do that for me. Uh, Mate, let me tell you when you embrace this and, and let go and find that feeling when you're playing, your sound will double. That's probably a bit, no, no. <laughs> Double, doubles a big call. It will open up a lot. Seriously. I, okay. I, did a session, I don't know whether I should say a name publicly, but a high profile player in London who does a big orchestra and teaches at one of the big universities. And I could hear it was an incredible player, but I could hear something in the in the sound. I'm like, there's something not there. There is a quality not there. Whilst it sounded fantastic, there's a quality not there. And I said to her, is that a familiar feel, feeling or a foreign feeling. She goes, foreign. I said, righto, well, that's what I feel like when I play all over the horn. And she really embraced the feeling of it and was prepared, and this is a big topic as well, prepared to let go of trying to control the result and stick to the process of keeping the body feeling that way. <laughs> Aperture corners, converting the energy to sound, maintaining the feeling. And the minute she started playing, I could hear the change in the sound and I was trying not to grin like a Cheshire cat because it was, <laughs> it was obvious the difference in the sound and she kept playing, started doing these incredible technical things that I wouldn't dream of trying to play all over, all over the range of the horn. She kept playing. She kept playing. I've had this experience with a woodwind player in Melbourne on flute. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Um, she goes, I've never, ever been able to play like that before. She played these. I've never been able to do that. 
It was different based on such a simple discovery of, oh, 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 that. And if you can sit there with your eyes closed and really internalize, oh, that feeling. And then go to play a note. You will hear the sound open up, right? You will. Yeah. It, it has to. It can't not. This must work, right? Right. Yeah. Stay in, stay in touch. Hey, hey well, um, thanks. Let me know how it goes, please. And if you want to talk beforehand, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to go through these things with you. Yeah. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. No worries. Hey, Max, I've just I've got Ken who's had his hand up there for a tick, and then I'll come to you. Ken Brandt from Victoria, my wonderful friend. How are you? Oh, just whack your mic on, Ken. I uh, can't hear you, unfortunately. There you uh, go. No. How are you? Good, thanks. I, yeah, I've been struggling. Uh, I'm vastly improved with uh, your advice, but I'm still struggling. I feel like I still have a long way to go. Yep. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk about the whole relationship between embouchure and, and everything else you talk about. You know, like I, I tried changing my embouchure and... Uh, and I think it's helping, but part of me thinks maybe I shouldn't even be thinking about that. I should be concentrating on your basics. So maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Well, you definitely have to focus on the on the basics, hundred percent. But is the process pure? Are we? Is there any illusion of competence? And we we really getting to the the. Uh, well, just the purity of process. Am, am I nailing what, what I'm working on? And if so, let's just say, for example, you've got your low C, it's ringing its head off. It's open, free, feels great, sounds great. Yeah, I feel like I could play low C like forever, you know? Right, great. So, but, what then can when I I, but then I play higher and I, I have much. I have difficulty staying as relaxed. Sure, sure. So that's the what What can I do? What can I sometimes do? What can't I do? So then we've got to get the magnifying glass out and go, so where do the issues start? Is it on a D? Do I start feeling like I'm choking up on an E or an F or a G in the stave? When I start doing harmonic slurs, low C to middle G. <clears throat> We go, this is passive. Expand, drop. The shape changes to change pitch. And the body doesn't need to get involved. How are your harmonic slurs? What speed can we do? When you start to do harmonic slurs, are you starting to engage, over-engage the abdominals and start getting a... and a bit uh, uh, in the body? If we're starting to engage the body on a low C and a middle G, imagine what's happening by the time you get to middle C and E and G above mm. the stave and high C. Everything contracts pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Well, shame on me. I haven't been working on that lately. And maybe that, that's the key to figuring out what's going on. It starts at the bottom, my friend. Starts at the bottom and getting the awareness of shape and Oh, I cannot stress enough the feeling of the concert hall and, and the fact Michael's a professional player who was just on there. And I say to him, oh, there's your instrument back here. And he goes, it's a foreign feeling. <laughs> Michael, trust me, it's going to change everything when you start and transfer that through your playing. It just will. It just does because the whole psychology changes. When the psychology changes, then the neural pathways start to develop in a new way just it it has to happen i you know i'd stake my entire existence on it so i've seen it too many times and it makes too much sense you know the whole concept of the body's concert hall letting the energy back in if i open the lips up i'm not blowing let the sound of the instrument back in to make to make the bell sound takes body and trumpet the body's creating the energy the instrument's creating the sound. So let the sound back in. 
What a random concept. We're told to blow, push forward. That's activating things that don't need to be activated quite often. And so we start to build up too much energy in the system. It chokes off because it's not being converted to sound. It's a pretty simple formula, right? So once we start getting... There's no engagement there. This is passive. Nah, you know, it's... it's uh, The whole thing is extremely logical. Like, I, and that's part of why it's frustrating. You know, like, I, part of me thinks I should be able to just turn it on. Because, like, all right, I agree with everything you're saying. I just have trouble executing it. Because you've got current wiring. Yeah. As soon as you go to, and this is the problem. And again, I get criticism at times because I'm not focusing on creating a perfect sound doing these exercises. If you try and make a perfect sound when you're doing exercises, all you're doing is engaging existing wiring. You're not changing anything. You've mm. got to let go of the perceived perfect sound and develop the feeling and the skill of freedom and then it won't sound good right it'll sound awful so then what do we do is go okay the process is good now we need to work on the sound and the sound is going to change in a different way to the pattern that you've been using to get the perfect sound in the inefficient um, way you've got to think of it as getting to the same destination but using different different roads and we're going to create a new you know the neural super highway to get straight to that that destination rather than the rocky country country road the mm. inefficient way right so you've got to let go of sound work on feeling and frank i'll get to you next my oh uh, max then frank <laughs> um Thanks, Greg. yeah does that make sense it does make sense i'll i'll, I'll go for it again Awesome. And someone's gone, be encouraged, Ken. It will come with time and trust in the process. Thanks. <laughs> Max. I was, uh, when I was listening to you talking to Sean, I was wondering because this is, this is, uh, you know, uh, he has his gigs coming up on July 4th and that's uh, about eight days from now. Uh, I know that one of the things you said that really, that really I know works is when you said, you know, before you play you, and you just hum. Uh, and nobody hears it, but that helps. The other thing that I was wondering if it would be really good for him to do is that soft upper register exploration. When you play, start on low C and you know that that's relaxed, then, you know, one, two, and three, you go up and, and it's pianissimo. Then the second time you do it. And, and so as you go up, uh, I found that when I was working on that, I was, <laughs> I was going higher <clears throat> with less effort and it was it was shocking to tell you the truth and i i had to stop and and look at the tuner and i couldn't figure out why the hell am i so high right now and and uh, as, a, as a short term uh and i wonder if that would help sean uh you know just because he has to get it done quickly this is an eight day yeah, eight day michael. exercise yeah my, michael the french horn player um definitely yeah. so what i would definitely say to both ken and and michael i mean the singing c series i, I haven't promoted it enough and i'm not pushing it because i don't like pushing it <laughs> i just want to put it out there and hope people find the value of it but what you're saying there is absolutely a hundred percent of what people need to be doing is to use the energy of the low c mm, now some of you might not have seen this i'm going to use this passive low c daniel upside down mish game <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> he's hanging from the roof. There we go. Um, check this out. This is all passive. Now that, the minute people see that, they will go, oh, you're, you're activating the body when you're playing those high A flats. Psychologically, that's the message that gets sent where I'm not engaging anything in the body. If any of you were here, I'll put your hand on my abdominal wall and you will not feel a contraction at all because pitch comes from here, not from the body. I'm just going to keep saying it. I'm going to put it on my epitaph. <laughs> right? 
We've just got to get this information through. We don't need to engage the body to play a higher pitch. So doing these ones here, it's a psychology exercise to change pitch without engaging the body. The minute that you start thinking, I've got to make it sound nice, you flip over into performance player mode and flip back onto the 1.0 highway circuitry and everything becomes inefficient. Right, so we've got to ignore sound and find those pitches passively. And most I've done these exercises with serious heavy pros, uh, especially in the, uh, the a few people that come to mind are in the in the UK. By the time you get to that fourth space E, the notes don't speak because they're so pinched and so pushed and so choked. The notes won't speak because the oscillator is conditioned to respond to excess activation in the body. And we use the body to, um, uh, what's the word I'm after? Um, I've got compromise in my head, it's not compromise, but uh, compensate. Compensate, compensate. When we don't understand the shape and the role of the oscillator, we use the energy from the body to compensate for the lack of awareness of shape. Burning the pizza, too much energy too much choke off, right? Versus let's find on any of these harmonics. Okay, now I want to get louder, right? There is a balance between create the energy and convert it to sound. If I create too much energy and the aperture doesn't open to allow that energy to travel, backs up. Right, so we get this back up in the throat because we've got energy that's created not being converted to sound. Where if we open up, let that flow, do I start talking to you and it's like this versus what everyone's doing? All of a sudden this happens. It's like a mouse trap. Boom, gone. <laughs> right? That's where this comes into play. What should it feel like? Oh, uh, don't let it close. If it does close, don't let it close. How? Where does it close? Does it close when I go, hmm? Nope. Does it close when I go, nope? Does it close when I play the low C? Nope. Does it close when I start playing the E flat or the A flat? Nope. Does it start closing up when I start getting louder? Yep. Great. That's what we need to work on. And eventually you'll feel that body start to elevate and the pressure rise. Aha, there's the issue, All right? So then we slowly, based on our understanding of the mechanics, use a soft note, mm -hmm. right? Small aperture, soft note, big aperture, loud note. That's where I determine the, you know, discern between aperture corners the corners of the black bit not the corners of the mouth not the corners out here but the corners of the aperture right that's where your pitch comes from the activation of the corners of the aperture right and I, I say the line basically the the Aperture corners determine the pitch and the tongue position makes it sound nice. Even though the position of the tongue is very important, I don't want to get too complicated with it. But the actual bit that changes the pitch is where the mouthpiece touches the rim and we don't want to pinch the middle of the lips down. So I'm trying to get all the attention away from pinching that bottom, that top lip. We want to work on those aperture corners. Soft note, loud note. High note, loud, soft. High note, loud, soft. High note, loud, soft. Whether it gets smaller inwards, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's the feeling of the activation there. If you think coming, what I want to do, this whole exercise of ah, wow, 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 is to feel the horizontal inward movement of the aperture corners. And I use my fingers. Why? Because quite often, and it was the case with me, my teeth would close. Ah, wow, 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 wow. 
shows that the teeth don't have to close. We're working on an understanding and a feeling. Oh, check this out. Now that's dramatic movement and that's pedal register. Is about a blooming low pedal E on a trombone. But with your understanding of the movement of the corners there and the concert hall and the tongue position all aligning and then we just we're aware of it we don't think about it when i can start talking to you there's no blow because i've taken a breath and let go of the bow so when we understand the energy of the low c and as max you're saying we gradually build up to that next note this is passing so i'm doing harmonic slurs above the stave and if you were here you'll feel that my abdominals are completely disengaged there's just the reduction of the breathing system do i have an extraordinarily large lung capacity no standard for my age for my build nothing crazy it's just the psychology behind it so if we get into those lines, and as I say to Michael before, you're about to load up and play whatever this phrase is, you go, hang on a minute, do I have to play that hard? Do I have to engage that much? What can I let go of? What, how little can I do to get the result that I want? <laughs> and then when we practice that, we get on the gig. At the end of the day, do what you've got to do to get through the gig, of course. A, you know, just, just play. Use the chops that got you to the gig to do the gig and allow the invitations and the drills that we've done leading up to it to slowly come through. And they may or may not. The only thing that you can do consciously in that moment is to just go, do I need to play that hard back off? Does it, what's my, is my mezzo forte a loud mezzo forte or a soft mezzo forte? Can I back off? You know, it's just about game management. But yes, doing as you're saying, they're just trying to pick those notes up higher without engaging and seeing what comes out. It's just using mouth compression. Again, if I pick up this horn, you won't feel a thing engage. There's no body engagement to do that. The body engagement is if I'm going to play a loud note. If I stay passive, there's a high C and there's no body engagement. That goes against the norm. <laughs> it's just, if I can demonstrate it, there's probably a degree of fact in it. And if you were here and you're grabbing, I could do that and go and engage and you see my body elevate or you'll see it and nothing happened in the body. So the, the, the role of the body is misunderstood. You've got to blow faster to play higher. No, no, you have to blow faster to, Displace the air more, more energy per second, louder. <laughs> right? It goes against the, the grain, I know. Um, and I'm happy to debate it with anyone on any stage, anywhere on the planet. Um, I just realized that there is chat going on. Oh, here we go. And I've been ignoring it. Um, practice make progress. Yeah, you will. Transferring this to actual playing. Any advice? uh as i was just saying then um someone's gone on the chat here transferring it to actual playing well it is actual playing but can we actually play just on a low c and then we start to develop it where do things start to get involved um uh frank and then i'll get across to you brett yeah, i just yeah, saw... I, I just can you hear me okay yes mate terrific can you... okay great um, so I, I'm, I'm a comeback player. I, I played a long time ago in high school and I quit for 30 years and I started playing again during the pandemic and uh, it was tough. And I, I discovered your program about three months into it uh, on a video. Phil Smith recommended it. Uh, and uh, I was doing a lot of buzzing, a lot of free buzzing, a lot of mouthpiece buzzing. Um, but but I, I I went through the program and and I think like what what Ken was talking about well, a lot of times we put we put the cart before the horse and and you know I had experience you know with teachers who studied with Arnold Jacobs and uh, and they were great they were great teachers and they really helped me a lot um, 
but but I think what was really what I really got from WinWorks was was the focus on on the process and the focus of body awareness uh, and uh, that that's something that that has to be trained. You 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 can't you don't you and it takes time for the mind to process this information. And so you do a little bit of it and then you back off and you reintroduce and you, and you introduce that also in the wind work system, how, how we learn basically um, and, and how to, how to learn more efficiently and how to, how to create a habit a physical habit uh, so that when you, when you come back to it, it becomes internalized and you're doing it over and over again. And, yeah. and I kind of hit a wall with the system in terms of, um, the, the exercises are, are deceptively very simple, um, but, but they are, they do work. They are, they, they are work on a level on a very, uh, sort of, uh, a le body level that is, is not something, you know, that on the surface, you're going to really understand right away. Um, I, I've since, uh, I use some of the exercises, but really the, the most important things that I internalize in my play, and this is one other thing I want to add to this, is that there's so much that you learn uh, from repetition, uh, from, from good repetition, and from just sort of self-discovery. Oh, I just lost your microphone there, Frank. Oh, can, can you guys still hear Frank? I, I can't hear him. No. Uh, Frank, we've lost your, we've lost your mic. Can you just turn your mic off and on again. Can you hear me now? There we go. Yep. Uh, where'd I, where'd you, what'd you catch? What, uh, what did we catch? About the last 30 seconds. Okay. So the, the, the other thing I picked up was that just in the, the process of, of practicing, uh, every day, but not practicing to your, your lips are shot, uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes at a time. Yep. three or four or five times a day. Uh, a lot of times uh, as players who are not professional players, we say, oh, well, I don't have time to do it. You, we always have like five or 10 minutes. It, you know, if you, five or 10 focused minutes uh, is better than two or three hours of, you know, going and hammering away at it. Uh, what do you get? And, and I, you know, today, like I play, I play every day about maybe five or 10 minutes since I recently got in an accident. I broke a rib. I had a pneumothorax. Um, I have a broken clavicle and I was in the hospital for four days. Couldn't play. And all we still horn, you know, and I got, back from the hospital and I just did you know the like, again the thing that I internalized from your system was the body awareness and singing see passive energy um, really engage is my ear um, and and my heart and I you know I listen for a song or you know if I spent a lot of years not playing but I did spend a lot of years sing listening listening to players that I love of and musicians and singers that I love and yeah. hate that on the horn. And I come back from, you know, four days in the hospital and I, you know, I just, I just play something and I transpose it a couple of uh, uh, registers up and I, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's astounding, like with no real effort, um, I'm, I'm playing, you know, above the staff in a with beautiful resonant sound that you know i couldn't think i mean i could maybe imagine to think of before i discovered these concepts but but now i feel like you know you can really sort of shape a sound like you like you shape a sound with your voice um with the horn and it's and i mean it's obvious that that's what the the great virtuosos do they they can they can make any sound on their horn they can replicate anything because they're they're really just using their their mind uh, and using it as a voice. Um, you know, uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm so grateful. Like, I, I don't know where my playing would be now without having discovered this. I'd probably still be sort of trying to full stare through, through the horn and push and push and push. And there's like there's none of that that happens. I mean, the the one of the the biggest discoveries for me was uh, you know like 
I mean, on a daily basis before the accident, I'm, I'm playing up to, to a nice resonant F um, uh, above the staff. Uh, you know, it breaks at about a G and an A. Uh, you know, I'd love for that double C to come sometime, but, but it's not, it's, I know it's there. I, I know it's there. It, it's not even a, an issue. And I thought it was my horn. I thought it was my mouthpiece. And it's, it's none of those things. Uh, it really is engaging your, your mind and, and trying to, you know, I think the, the thing for me now is I get up, even like warming up, like warming up is not a thing. I was in the hospital four days. I, did, I don't warm up. I, I came home and I just started playing some tunes. Um, yeah. And, you, you know, I just thought about it. It's like, you know, you, the, these players, they go, they play in orchestras. They don't, they, they go and they're ready to play. You know, they, they practice, they put in the time too, but it, it, it's really a, it's really a mind body thing that is really phenomenal uh, that I, that I discovered through doing your exercise. Fantastic. Um, and I, and I think, I, I think it, yeah, it can be discouraging for folks beginning in the beginning uh, because like you said, it's not a beautiful sound. It's none of those things. It's not, that's not what you're working on. It's, a, it's really training your body to, to, to be in a, in a place. And then you internalize those things. And then you can, you know, you can think about music and play music. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. I, I, I can't tell you. Oh man, thank you for reaching out and, and saying hello and, and, and saying that because it's so important that people really listen to what you just said. It's, it's training a new feeling. It's, it's repetition of a process that at the start yeah. is not going to sound good. It can't sound good. If you try and make it sound good, you're going to embrace 1.0 wiring. So you're not changing yeah. anything. You've yeah, got you to let go. More and more tension. More and more tension. You try, the harder you try to like get to this thing, you just get tighter and tighter. You get tired. You, you do all kinds of – you just train all kinds of bad habits. Um, yeah. yeah. I practice my swing, left-handed swing. I learn it and I film it to make sure that it's in a line and it's not. And then I film it and go, that must be in line. And I watch it back and it's not. So I do it again and that must be the right alignment. I watch it back and it's not. And you go, this is ridiculous. And then you find what alignment is and you go, there's no way that's the alignment that I want, even though I can see that it's right. That feels ridiculous. So then what do you do? Close your eyes and store it and repeat it and repeat it. And I practice with my eyes closed. And then I'll put a ball in front of the club. And if the swing is the same thing, the ball will be hit well. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really logical um, yeah. process. There's also this idea of your, your body, like your body's going to tell you, like, I'm done right now. Your brain tells you, I'm done. I need a break. And sometimes we're, we're stubborn. And we, especially trumpet players, we like, we want to keep going. We want to keep pushing harder. And Correct. it's the wrong thing you. I you, said, you gotta quote, let you gotta let your brain embrace the concept. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because literally, I, I worked on my. We had a lot of rain. I don't. You might have seen on the news that the eastern coast of Australia had a lot of rain over the last couple of months. Extraordinary amount. And then finally, the sun's out, so I can get back out on the golf course. And I went every day last week. I'm, I need more data. I need more learning. And I got out and build, build, error, error, error. Great shot, bad shot, great shot, bad shot. And on the Friday, everything clicked and I've never, ever played better. Great straight drives, couldn't miss a thing. My short game's getting better. And when your handicap starts to come into the teens, it's all about short game and putting to, to get down to a lower thing. I'm paring hole after hole, a birdie, like scoring like never before. Then the competition on Saturday... First drive into the trees, second drive into the trees, third drive into the trees. And the frustration is funny because I know that that frustration is beneficial because that's the error message being sent to the brain going, don't do that. And if you leverage it in the right way, that's how we learn. But I got, I, I duffed a little short shot that I would never miss. And I said to the guy that I was playing with, I need to go home now. I need to stop now. My brain hurts right? I'm playing golf and I'm mishitting. And I said to him, my brain hurts. I was cooked. Lots of thinking, lots yeah. of construction, lots of development, lots of building. And eventually 
I cannot think about it anymore. And I just had to stop and everything was like, I, I literally wanted to walk off the course, not because I was scoring badly. It's not that. It was burnout from the thought yeah. process. We can develop these skills, all of these things that we're walking, working on, walking around the street, milk spout, corners in, bottom lip out, feed for victory. And the, the X marks the spot. I've got these X's. Right now, you can't see them very well, but I've drawn a couple of lame X's on the aperture corners to get people to put a couple of X's on their fingers and walk around. It's creating an invitation to play efficiently. It's training the brain to not engage. Oh, all these little drills right, that are directly related to playing, but individually would look like they've got nothing to do with playing. And then people pick yeah. up the horn like Ken's doing it there. If Ken went like this, 100 times a day, and no note came out, perfect. <laughs> the no C, can't wait to add that to the course. Why is that important? Because it's telling the brain, don't engage. Don't engage more than that. It's not harder work. And people might be sitting there going, yeah, it takes more work. I'll go, okay, then, well, I'll get you to consider this. Then I'll go, and then go, they're different. One's got an os oscillation, one doesn't. They're different. Is this oh, any harder work than, no. <laughs> it's no harder work, they're just different. So the no C, all of a sudden becomes a low C when it's ready to. And the process in the body doesn't change. There's a feeling, obviously a difference in feeling when the oscillator gets involved because the aperture corners have found themselves. But until then, the process is being repeated. And once we've got that really free resonant sympathetic oscillation low C, there's the foundation for all of your playing. The foundation level, foundation. On that point, I'm getting rid of the foundation, premium and ultimate levels. They're going, it's going to be just the course uh, as of July 1. So anyone who's a subscriber, don't panic. You can keep whatever level you're on forever. Um, but we're going to get rid of those levels and just go one thing through the course because people are like, should I move on? Don't know whether to move on. So I'm going to be doing this every week. And I'm also putting together as of 1st of July, new newbies will be in Q322. <laughs> so third quarter 2022 and a support group in Facebook. So every quarter there's going to be a new Facebook group and <clears throat> I'll get involved with each group and the group talks amongst themselves because you guys talking to each other about problems and issues. And then I can come along and you go, Greg, you said this had happened and do this and it's not working. I'll go, righto, let's figure it out. <laughs> right. So I'm going to be a lot more involved with, with everyone because at the end of the day, if I can do this stuff, anyone can. And I mean that 1 million percent. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Right. So my role is to get you there to find the playing that you want to be able to do. Um, now, Brett just turned off and he's still there, but the camera went off. I was just about to to uh, address his put. Here he is, he's back again. How are you, Brett? Yeah, looking, looking, can't quite get the... Frank, great to see you. Thanks for... Um, for for joining in and, and and telling us your story it's fantastic it's very 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 helpful <laughs> oh. while while brett's trying to uh, unmute what he's put on the on the chat here is um, transferring this to actual playing. And I think I sort of 
really spoke about that then. The drills that we're working on, the aperture corners are all energy conversion to sound. Once you've got the understanding of what we're working on, the feeling of it, then you just sit there and repeat, 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 repeat. Then you get to the point where you're bored or you're driven crazy and the note doesn't speak. And then you go, okay, well, I'm just going to play a low C using my 1.0 wiring. And then you tighten the lips up, engage the body and push harder. You feel the backup, you feel everything engage. There's your point of difference. So I got the result, but I didn't get the result with the process that I wanted, right? So then that's the way that we practice. This must work. What determines pitch? Big question. What determines pitch? Aperture corners, B for victory, X marks the spot, aperture corners, and tongue position. If we understand those two elements and then not use the body to try and force, then you'll find the notes that you want. <laughs> this must work. So that's kind of the effect of how to get it into your regular plane is to just uh, live the experience, the sensation, and eventually the note will happen. Point of difference, error. Error, I engaged, I pinched, I pushed, I choked. Error, 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 don't do that. What does it feel like? Make it feel like that. And eventually, again, I can only say it as many times as I can say it until I'm out of, you know, breathe my very last breath. That's how the instrument works. Once we find that, we can build everything on top of that. Uh, I think that's we're heading towards, I think I've been going for a couple of hours here, yeah, almost a couple of hours. Um, are there any thoughts, questions, criticisms, theories? Daniel, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you too. Yeah. It's been a long, it's been a long time and you taking your course for a very long time. And I just love keeping on reviewing, going back because you're always changing things. And I do really appreciate it. Awesome. I'm a vocalist professionally. My secondary instrument is the trumpet. My motivation toward playing the trumpet, uh, my stepfather got me into it as, as I was when I was a kid. My mother was a virtuoso on the piano, and I got out of it at age 25 after giving up two, giving up wearing out two uh, student horns and a flugel horn, and promised myself to get professional horns if I ever do it again. And then uh, another performer got me when I was doing gigs in San Francisco as a vocalist. Found out I played for 15 years. They said you got to get back into it. And, I've been fighting it for 10 years. Um, the thing that's a real bear is having it where I now recognize all your techniques, but there's a point when I'm like reading music that can go away. I start not go away. Well, you're all of a sudden you're blowing too hard. Um, and also when you get tired, and I understand about giving stuff up, but sometimes you don't have that luxury if you're in the middle of a, of a performance that you well, you kind of just got to do the performance. Absolutely. So um, one of the things I do have uh, that I am really diligent in is, is that I'm always doing wow, all that stuff um, that has made such a huge difference. Again, I was sick for 10 days. I couldn't play the horn if my life depended upon it. And I am back to normal now. And I said, well, in the past, it'd be like months before you'd bounce back after being out 10 days. Mm -hmm. And literally, it's been like two days. Okay, I have a little less stamina, but, you know, I'm being able to go 45 minutes instead of 45 minutes instead of an hour, you know, and that's good enough. And I probably, I do tend to go a little go past, so I'm just trying to cut that back a touch. Mm -hmm. um, also, what's been really interesting that wasn't related to your course, I found you might, everyone was trying if you're not doing this is I'm trying to like at least once a month, if not once a week, go out into the park or wherever and play your instrument. It is a totally different feeling. Um, and it's a little easier. And also it really can kind of point out, it's, it, we're, it's weird, it's sort of a freeing feeling. It's so different than playing inside, uh, inside. I do have one question for you and I don't know if you can do this offline or not. Uh, I still am very weak on my music theory and all that stuff. And I've got the Arvin book. I've got all that stuff. Um, but if there's any specific pages when you have, you can do this offline, um, pages you recommend lead or work on Arvin book 
or that any other books or method books, uh, I'm open to that idea if you are willing or able to do it. Um, go, go straight to the um, the grand studies and the solos. They're really complex. <laughs> so go go to the hard stuff, and and literally, where's where's my oven? Um, all right. My, oh, here it is. Okay. So I've got um, page three hundred and forty-four in the red version. Okay. Var variations number twelve, Norma. Right. It's complicated. So we look at it and go, right, let's break it down, shall we? <laughs> Bar at a time, super duper 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 slow. You even get your pen out and write, where's the beat? Right, it might seem really remedial, but let's take it back to that at the start. You won't have to do this forever. You look at it and go, where does the beat lie? Well, I'm in 12.8. This is a good one because it's there's a, a lot going on. We're in 12.8. We've got a dotted half note and we've got six tuplets there. Crikey, where does it all fit? And you look at it and count and go, dum, 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 da, 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 dum. Do it slow, really slow. Feel where the beat is. Feel it, understand it. Then speed it up. Dum, doodle, dum, 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 whatever line was speed it up again do it over and over and over and over and over speed it up speed it up speed it up speed it up then you've got to the point you can look at it and the brain will start and recognize okay there's so there's the quarter note there's the six tuplets the sixteenths the dotted quarter note this is quite a complex one so you might want to go a little easy, <laughs> a little easier but at the end of the day hey let's challenge ourselves right so you so work page, on that from this page 333 uh 344 excuse me 44 okay yeah, number 12 um variations of a theme from norma by bellini um but the essence of it is find any any of them even earlier just find the easier like the syncopation syncopation is a good way to do the the rhythmic syncopation exercises and just find where the beat is and do it with a metronome you must do it with a metronome break the bar down where does the beat fall right then speed it up speed it up then look at the next bar on its own calculate what does that sound like where is the beat what's the value speed it up speed it up then put both bars together it's mundane but so is learning a new language <laughs> Want to learn Spanish? How would you do it? Oh, I'm working on Besame Mucho right now. Oh, and I don't speak Spanish, so yeah, I know the reality. <laughs> Love it. So what would you do? You break it down, you listen to the phrasing and the articulation. Yeah. What does it sound like? And then you you record yourself. I hope you're recording yourself and you replicate. Yeah. What do I what am I sounding like? People don't like doing it. Reality check. But uh, one of my great friends, Jamie Ollers over here is an amazing tennis sax player. He used to just practice even before the days of phones. He'd have a dictaphone and he would record all of his practice sessions. And unless it sounded like Coltrane, he wasn't happy. Right? And he'd play and he'd listen back. No, nah, that's not it. Play, listen back. No, nah, that's not it. Listen to the album again. Right, that's what I want to sound like. We play it and listen back. Oh, that's pretty close. He's won every saxophone competition around the world and plays saxophone like Brecker or anyone, you know, he's a killer. So the at the end of the day, reading music is just is just maths. Right? Reading music is just maths. And it'll get to the point where you can look at it, you see the shape, you you understand it, it's kind of most of the information's there. You don't have to consciously think about it. Sometimes um, difficult passages uh, will turn up and you've got to think about it. Often I have one in a, in a theatre show where it went into all double sharps. It was in a particular key in, the, in flats and all of a sudden there's sharps everywhere and you look at it and go, and double sharps. I, I don't know what that means. I had to look at every single note 
they go, oh, E double sharp. Oh, no, that's yeah. that's an F sharp. And, and F double sharp is a G. Oh. And it ended up being a line in G sharp minor or something. So as soon as that line was coming up, I'd think G sharp minor, whatever it was. And I wasn't looking at the notes. I didn't have to think about it. I just had to learn what it was about. Yeah, that's um, a big one I'm learning right now. I'm really not with, good with chords and I, my music theory is not to be desired to say the least. Well, Any so then chords so. and learning chords and that that's a whole different experience yeah. again as well. And the piano, oh, you're a singer. You probably do a lot with piano. So um, I really, I, I, I used to play a little bit on the piano, but I'm a total amateur on it. Um, but really the, the singing part is really, it's, it's used a lot with you say when using your breath and no, it's a little different, but a, no more effort than in conversation is the kind of the issue. But when you're belting it out, it's, it's, it's big. I have a problem because I'm such a huge guy that my rest, your, your exhale of like the balloon you talk about, I have to really back off from that. Oh, even oh. on that, because my oh. exhale, is so much more powerful than most right. people. Sure, sure, sure. Well, don't forget. Now, I don't know whether you're here at the start of the um, the session today, but Wayne Bergeron jumped on and said g'day, and we had a bit of a chat. And there's a video of him going, "Look, there's a tiny hole. Yeah. How much air can we possibly bloom and get through there? Not much. Everyone's trying to blow the freaking house down. Absolutely." No. Right. It's just no. not the way it works. It's just I'm so finally getting to the point where I'm catching myself like, no, you're you're doing too much coming down. You're you're putting too much air down below to try to make this go forward. It's really no effort in conversation. And instantly my upper notes get better. It just all of a sudden the sound is getting bigger and fatter and nicer and sweeter. And you don't and you know, and I'm finally starting to be able to play in the upper register where I can play it quietly. There you go. And that's where I really know I'm making progress because I can I can belt it out. But if you want to do something, I, I pretty much do jazz, Frank Sinatra, that kind of stuff. Awesome. Um, my whole thought was because I don't have a band a lot of times to play with. Uh, you know, I'm doing a show. Um, I can pick up the trumpet and do some of those solos. Like I have, uh, I only have eyes for you pretty much down the, the lead trumpet solo on that one down. Beautiful. You know, that, right. you know but I love, I love the horn. Um, I have a bunch of them. Um, I absolutely, you know, I just absolutely love your course. I can't say more than your course. Anybody asked me, I see a new kid. I said, Oh man, you got to go see Greg Spence because you know, because they're 12 years old that they're going to go in circles around me in about a year or less. They stick to it. Yeah. But uh, I, anything of learning jazz chords and stuff like that, that's the thing I'm, I'm working on the Mixolydian scale right now. But yep. that's one of the things I'm really struggling with. I don't see a connection right yet. Oh, I look, know I'm, I'm, I'm not the right guy to talk to about this, but I can completely empathize. The maths can get in the way sometimes. So what I would suggest to you is to close your eyes and internalize the sound of the Mixolydian. Don't think mathematically about it. Flat seven. You know, and I'm in F sharp, so there's an E natural water. Hear the sound, hear the sound of it. Then play a simple chord on the piano to get the sound of it. Uh, but aim to not think about the scale itself and mathematically think musically about it. What's the function of that dominant seven? It's the leading note to the third of the next chord quite often. What does that sound like? um go around see if you can go around the cycle of fourths playing in mixolydians but improvise don't play da 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 oh, that's <laughs> da 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 see if you can do it in every key without thinking about what notes you're playing right so we're going and improvise them <laughs> So I wanted to add little bits in, just from thinking musically, not trying to think. It's flat seven, oh, D flat, you're thinking, you know, theoretically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
I get away from that and think, what does it sound like? What's the? Well, I'm better faking it than I am. Uh, I, don't, I keep music away from me. <laughs> if I practice the death out of something, then I can kind of embellish sure. it after that. You know, yeah, or if yeah, I yeah. see like the melody line, I can kind of. I do much better overall. Um, that's that's the number one. Play all of me, and then start and embellish the melody. And eventually, as you keep doing it more and more, the melody will be lost to the embellishments and the embellishments is the solo. So you're improvising based on the, the harmony of it um, and the sound of it. So, I mean, there's, there's the mathematical approach and there's the artistic approach. You can go around and... And outline the chords, but to me, there's an absolute disconnect between the music and and doing that. And so that's why I'm not good to talk to about it because I get confused and I don't consider myself a jazz player. I can improvise and tell a nice story, but on a very remedial level, right? I'm not a jazz guy. I'm kind of remedial at all of it, but yeah, except for the singing. I, I no, someday I'm looking for the day where my horn playing is going to be on par with my singing. And it's not there yet. Love it. Great. Well done. Critical awareness of the problem's half the solution. You just said it out loud. So what do we do? Keep working on it. If you've got the vision and you've got the love of the sound and you've got the understanding of the technique, then it's just horn on the face. Keep playing. Record yourself. Listen back. Yep. I sounded like Harry James. Good. Next. Thank you, uh, Brett. Brett, we're um, it's yeah, great yeah. to great to chat, Daniel. Thank you, um, Brett. You've you've got a microphone. Yes, <laughs> I tried oh, to I get am. it back and it booted me, so I've been yeah, trying to get back on. But yeah, that's all right. Good to meet you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm well. I'm well. Um, oh, a couple of uh, a lot of what you what you say, I've sort of followed you, you know, for quite a long time, and um, a lot of what you say and the uh, windworks uh, stuff is it resonates a lot with me. Um, I come from a, a Claude Gordon training background. I studied with Jeff Pertle for about five years okay. online. And um, so a lot of what you're saying is, is res uh, resonates with me. But um, I'm an aspiring jazz musician, so I, I want to play jazz. It's a reason for me wanting to be more efficient on trumpet yep. so that I can play. And I, I, I generally have a good endurance, but I find myself in a situation uh, sometimes where my head gets in the way and uh, what I'm practicing and the, you know, the ease that I'm experiencing in the practice room doesn't necessarily translate to the stage. If I'm in an environment where I'm comfortable, I know the people, you know, uh, it's, it's, this doesn't, doesn't happen, I'm you know, quite free. But if I put into any kind of uh, environment where there's unknowns or I get self-conscious, it kind of, a lot, you know, I, I, I lose a lot of that efficiency. I don't know how much people really notice but I can feel it, you know, and I blame for the, for, the, for, the, for the pleasant feeling that I get. And so it spoils it for me. It might not necessarily spoil it for the audience, but uh, definitely does for me when I feel that way. Yeah, no. it, it comes down to, as I said before, you can't have um, doubt and confidence at the same mm. time. So yeah, on, that's, a, yeah. on any particular level, there is a doubt in your mind of the quality of what you're producing, mm. right? And and it's funny, like I, I spoke last night on the, the UK version of this. Um, oh, no, it wasn't. It was in a in an interview the other day where on Sunday nights I'm up playing at a Latin club. You know, lots of people dancing, lots of people there. Hard work, but love it. No stress whatsoever. Then I sit down on Dancing with the Stars, people dancing, audience there, you know, a few million people listening, no big deal. <laughs> but the you know it's just a gig but the brain changes and so the environment mm. changes and the environment creates chaos whether it be um the audio change because of the audio environment or the fact that all of a sudden you've got a bloody red camera red light on a camera looking at your face mm. you start to second guess until you don't until you make mm. the call going and I say the words, I don't care. It's not that I don't care. I care a lot. I want to do a great job, but I'm not concerned about what comes out of the horn because as Roger Federer says, trust your practice. Yeah. And, so and you... that, that sort of reminds me of, uh, of um, uh, a book I read called Effortless Mastery uh, by Kenny Werner. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but um, 
watch a masterclass of his recently and I think you know that's it's, it's what's in your head you know it's it's all in the it's all in the head you know yeah if, yeah. you're, if, you're, if your musical message is clear and your belief in your ability technically to be able to convey that message then all you do is get up there and go right let's see how this goes you know so here, here's a more direct um a more direct uh, uh specific question uh for you uh my daily practice uh is, this is not an exaggeration to say that it's basically an hour of flexibilities and articulation type exercises Claude Gordon style, Colin, you know, advanced flexibilities, that kind of thing. And it's a set routine. It's worked really well for me. Uh, and so I'm terrified to, you know, deviate from it. So I kind of locked into this. This was well, really, it started out being an hour and a half, but I've sort of increased the efficiency of it as I've gotten more flexible and strong over the years to the mm -hmm. point where I can do it in like 40 minutes. And, uh, and it serves me well because it gives me the endurance I need for anything I have to do and, I, and everything else stays solid for me. But, um, but, but the question, the specific question I have is like having been doing this for a long time, this set routine, um, I, I kind of think, you know, it's probably a, it's probably a, you know, a barrier to moving forward. And so I'm wondering whether or not, you know, you'd recommend you know, like sometimes I think maybe I should just be better. I should just be practicing my solos, you know, spend like I don't spend any time, very little time doing that. Only if I've got a gig coming up and there's a song or changes I need to get my head around. But otherwise, uh, I don't spend any time. I feel like it's a, it, I almost feel like it's a waste of my time because unless I've got the chops to play efficiently and with good resonance, then what's the point of, you know, having a, a couple of good licks up my sleeve, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I'm kind of stuck, and you know, I, I think you know, like so to me, it's like a, a part of me wants to say, all right, you've got to double down, continue doing the foundation work you're doing, that foundation routine, but add on top of that actual practice of actual performing uh, on top of that, or do I, you know, or would you know, should I could sacrifice the you know the flexibilities and stuff and just just stop doing it, you know, just get just dive into, you know, but I'm scared that that's going to change how things feel. Well, it will change how it feels. <laughs> yeah. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. If mm. you want to make a change, if you want things to be different, you've got to do things differently. So it's going to feel different. And that's threatening because mm. the 1.0 wiring goes, I need to hang on to what I've got. It's working for me in inverted yeah. commas. It's working for me. So I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing to hang on to that. That's yeah. fine. That makes perfect sense. If you're satisfied with where you're at. If you're happy with your playing standard now and you just mm. want to maintain, maintain. Mm. If you want to get more efficient, well, then we do some efficiency drills, which is setting a sensation. Like, I'm not sure how you how long you've been on, but we've been talking about all the humming and all that sort of thing. Mm. How does the system work? What does it feel like? I'm pretty so familiar with your, yeah, with, 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 your, with you know, your, your uh, the principles that you're, you know, sure. you, that, you're, yeah. that you've coined. Yeah. So the, the invitation to play efficiently based mm. on all the elements, the drills, the cycle of T's, technical everyday elements, there is a direct golf implication there on purpose. Mm. Um, what does it feel like to play efficiently? Do I feel like that when I'm playing? No, or yes to a point. Then we go, righto, so where does our, in, our efficiency turn into inefficiency at what part of the range? What is it about your, what do you want to develop in your playing? Is it more efficient? You probably actually already said this, excuse me if I'm mm. asking what you've already said, but is it just better efficiency or is it an expanded technique? Um, it, 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 was, it was more, it was more about, uh, I, I guess if, if, if there is any issues with efficiency, it's probably in the uh, you know, middle of a register. But I figure that, you know, uh, I, I don't do much playing other than uh, the, the foundation work I do. So there's a limited amount. I guess it's everything's, you know, dependent on how much time you spend doing it, you know, for the repetition. So, you know, in a given routine, if you added up the amount of seconds that you spend in that register, it's probably not enough. Sure. Um, so, uh, but, well, I guess what my question really was about the fact that, you know, if I sit at home, and play through some songs, uh, you know, I, I have a, 
you know, very good feeling of ease. And if I'm playing with people I'm familiar with, also, you know, feel uh, in, a, in an environment where I'm familiar, it also feels easy, but uh, I'm easily thrown, okay. you know? Yeah. I've got a concept called the portrait, right? And the yeah. portrait can be an experience at home where you're sitting there practicing, you're free, you're enjoying it. You close your eyes and you store the feeling of it and you put it on the mind's feature wall. You're looking at it. You can refer to it whenever you want. Okay. But then when all of a sudden you get to the gig and it's like, oh, you look down and James Morrison and Wayne Bergeron and Bobby Shue and Scott Tinkler and Paulie Williamson are sitting in the audience having a beer watching. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it's like, what do we do? We can get over, we can get thrown by the environment or we can um, go, right, let's look on the mind's feature wall. What did I do in the practice room? Oh, yeah, it felt like this. Let's replicate that. So with my focal dystonia students, I'm, I'm calling it build tomorrow. What can we do now? And then can we, what do we want to be able to achieve tomorrow? So if you've got a gig coming up, um, you know, that you get asked to play. Whereabouts are you, by the way? Oh, I'm in Gladstone. Oh, are you? In Queensland, <laughs> yeah. 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 So if you get, if you get a gig at the Gladstone um, concert hall, right someone says yeah. right oh your feature artist in front of the gladstone big band playing mm. you know we're, we're flying you to melbourne to play at the concert hall right righto instantly if there's any reaction of <clears throat> oh mm. there's doubt yeah what are we not what are we not confident about it's either our technical ability or our musical message if you go well i know i've got the technique because i do it in the practice room all the time Right, mm. right. Close your eyes. What does it feel like? What's the message? Oh, my message is Great. I've got the musical message and I've got the technical facility. Let's do it. Eyes closed and store it. Then visualize yourself on stage at the Melbourne Concert Hall. Mm. We're playing night and day, right? What am I going to play there? What does it feel like? And live the experience before you get there. Then when you get there, mm. you've built tomorrow. You get there and go, right, what did I put forward? Look up on the feature wall. What did I do? Put yourself in your practice room again. Ignore the environment if it's threatening. Mm. Right? Embrace the environment if you want to communicate and you love, you feed off the environment. Mm. But if it's threatening to the um, fight and flight system because there's, it's scary for whatever reason, shut it out. Mm. Do, it's easy to say those words, shut it out. Really easy. You're Stop. talking about visualization. So, are you an advocate of meditation? You do visualization Absolutely. and meditation. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, see, as I was saying before, I've never done meditation, but the parallels between what I do, humming eyes closed, learning the feeling, and it has a calming impact on the body, the whole serotonin release, thanks to the mm -hmm. the vagus nerve thing. Um, then you've got the vision, you've got the confidence, you've got the belief. I love my sound. I've said yes to the gig. I was asked to do the gig for a reason. I must have chops. Mm. Let's share that sound. Do I like my sound? Yes. Do I like my message? Yes. Do I have the techniques mm. to carry it off? Yes. So close your eyes and practice in your practice room what you want to deliver on stage. And then when you get on stage, you're humming before you walk on. Mm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling comfortable. What did it look like yesterday when I was at the practice room? What did it feel like? and get on stage and replicate that. Don't fight the environment. And this mm. is no different to anyone playing any instrument in any um, orchestra. You're not going to hear yourself on stage the way that you do on the stage. So don't try and hear yourself the way you do on at home on stage. Replicate the feeling of it. Right? Play right. by feel. Because often we got a, a saying in the, the Melbourne trumpet land when I was down there, if you can't hear yourself, if you can't hear yourself, play softer. Mm. Don't fight the environment, right? So if you find an environment that's threatening, build the environment that's not threatening and live in that, you know, a, yeah. a dual existence. Yeah. So, yeah. Very good. Um, on a side note, uh, just a, a, a complete tangent um you did you play in the blues brothers revival band at some point yes 
you did. Oh, I, I played with them in eighty. Did a tour with them in eighty six. Oh, I'm not eighty six. Yeah. There you I, go. What, when did you when did you tour with them? I did nineteen ninety four with Stein oh. and the boys. Yes, yes, <laughs> Mick and Mick Chinnery and. Yeah. So yeah. for those watching that don't know, the Blues Brothers Revival Band was the first um, concept cover band in Australia, and they they did the Blues Brothers show, and you had the guys getting up doing Jake and Elwood, and I I took I did my first year of VCA in 1993, and was so overwhelmed that I just needed to take a year off to get my head together, and in that year off, I did 16 weeks just up and down the the East Coast. So yep. that was fun. There yeah. you go. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Brett. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a small world. Uh, good to chat. Good to yeah. chat. Um, Pat, we meet. <laughs> Finally. Finally. Yeah, I'm a bit late getting on. I apologise. But, uh, yeah, nice to see you again. Yeah, you too. So we've finally got our emails happening. So no doubt we'll chat during the, the week. But um, how's it all coming along? Uh, Pretty good. I mean, uh, I'm at a bit of an impasse where I'm trying to get the lesson with you, but uh, I have noticed uh, a lot better endurance with my regular playing. I haven't been able to, you know, use the practice setup that I use um, with with Windworks, you know. But I think it is making some difference. So uh, yeah, cer certainly uh, guys that I play with are noticing it. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how it's going. I'd rather get all the benefits now, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, and 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 the the thing is, why I'm setting up these these new groups is for people to talk themselves through. You're going to have the times where you notice good things happening, and it's fantastic. And then you're going to have the times when nothing works, and it feels horrible. And that's where people want to give up on it. And that's where we need the support of people around us. Going, you're going to have down times. And it's not going to work and it's you're going to get on the gig and you're fighting it, you're choking you're pushing and doing all the things that you don't want to do and then that's where the power of just simply going that's okay i'm working on it right i right. did it okay. i remember i was alluding to that latin gig that i used to do on sunday nights and then dancing with the stars on monday and i'm doing all these drills and really pulling the thing apart and i was practicing one way and performing another they were two different i needed to play my 1.0 way to get the gig done i had no choice but i hated it because i knew there was an easier better way of doing things so i'm on stage going i know it goes against everything you want to work on but you have to play this pattern so you've got to do it with this technique but it's okay because you're working on it and over time it develops and it does that morphs into your playing and then you're playing as a hybrid between what you were doing in the new stuff. You're not doing everything wrong. No one's doing everything wrong. There's just, we need to refine particular processes, you know, eliminate the inefficient stuff. And it's, so I'm teaching you what not to do rather than teaching you what to do. Like, hang on, you're doing that. You don't need to be doing that. That's, that's not helping your cause, you know? So um, I'm looking forward to seeing where you're at and breaking it all down and, and, and moving you along the um the process yeah well i was surprised this forum was still going because i was here it's i'm in toronto canada it's sunday afternoon and i was at a family thing earlier in the day so i was like i i can't believe the time difference for 14 hours but uh yeah it's uh so i was pleased to see this was still going and i recognize uh, i recognize one name janet who i've been chatting with on the forum Oh, beautiful. She's right. Yeah, she's not here now, but I mean, this is great because the forum is, hasn't been that active. At least I'm not seeing it. So this is, this yeah. is nice. It's time to step it up. I'm, 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 my frustration levels have been going through the roof for the last couple of years. I'm the kind of character that goes, right. I think personally, I, I have, Brett, I have belief in what I'm doing. I have confidence in what I'm doing. I think the product is terrific. I think the information is, well researched, experienced, and works. And you know, we've had thanks to Daniel and a few other guys have got on here and said, "Man, it's changed everything. It's really great. Thank you." And it's like, awesome. That's that's. I need to get this out there. The forum for me was for people to talk, to interact with themselves, not me. I've, my videos are there. I don't want to overburden people. But it turns out 
I, I need to be on there and engaging more. So this is the result of my frustration. I've got to get it happening. We've got to have this conversation. We've got to get people, you know, on the right path and support each other. It's a community. And so the, the idea of how I thought it would work and the reality is different. So having this engagement and uh, getting to know people more personally isn't something that I would naturally do because I feel like I'm getting in the way and burdening people versus no, I need to be there and doing that. <laughs> right. So here we are. Um, I'm really excited to do it. I can't, I, I just want to build the heck out of this thing. And so last night was UK Europe in the morning. Today is afternoon, evening in the States and every Sunday and Monday morning, this is, this is the new normal. Um, and putting the, the groups together. So as I was saying before, when people join up from July one, I'm going to have a specific Facebook group called Q322, so not 2022, quarter three. And anyone that signs up in that thing, because they're new to the course, they're going to be at a different level from people that have been there six months or 12 months. So their conversations will be different, but it's just that breaking it down. Someone might say something in a particular way that whilst it might be the same as what I'm saying, might be heard in a different way. So have a different impact on, on the on the student. And there's no one way to say this stuff. You know, there's we've got to constantly come up with this ah, ooh, and aperture corners and milk spout and X marks the spot and V for victory and eyes closed or moo. They're all aiming at exactly the same thing. All the same thing all these different ways of trying to get the same result most teachers any decent brass lesson should have this most don't but <laughs> all should that's what it feels like but what is it doing bodies resonance ah oh. concert hall right aperture corners pitch change tongue position freedom no pinching down of the lip tissue, all these really important elements that don't get discussed. So I'm just breaking it down a little bit and there's no one way to break it down. So I'm trying all these different little tricks and someone will go to me and I've had it all the time. Oh, ooh, didn't make much sense to me. But as soon as I do the milk spout, the milk jug, ah, oh, that makes sense. I just think about that, that I stop rolling my bottom lip over. Ah, oh, that feels different. Oh, that must be good. It's different. Feels weird. Doesn't sound very good. But this must work. It makes sense logically. So, you know, it's an ongoing exploration uh, and sharing. And I'm open to all the ideas. If anyone says, oh, Greg, I'd get you to consider rah, rah, rah. I'll go, oh, yeah. I, I, the, Thank you. The only reason I'm not going to go down that path is because dot, 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 or what a great idea. Let's do that. I love that. Like the milk spout came from this professional trumpet player in London. She goes, oh, it's like the milk jug. I would never have thought of that in a million years, but gee, the milk spout has really helped a lot of people. This is how we just keep coming up with fresh ideas, trying to learn more. I want everyone to play the way that they want to. It's very simple. And there's no reason why all of us sitting here can't get the results from the horn that we want. So the question is what's stopping us? Again, <laughs> I'm teaching you what not to do. What's stopping us? Not what to do. Well, it's very easy. I want to play these notes. It sounds like this and I've got to blow through a bit of pipe. How hard can it be? <laughs> right? Pick up his trumpet, his notes, go practice. Great. So what's the problem then? Oh, well, it's not working. Why is it not working? That's why in one of those videos, I talk about the circuitry, the uh, you've got problems at your house, the wiring's not working. And the Sparky says, so what's the problem? Where's your circuit board? Oh, I'm not telling. <laughs> what do you mean? You're not telling me? Well, I need to find, you know, I need to find out where the circuitry is, the, the wiring to see what's going wrong. No, nah, I'm not telling you. Well, you're not going to be able to fix anything. We've got to figure out what our wiring is and go, what's, you know, what's crossed? What's 
not in the right place? What can we undo to get the results that we want? We've all got the wiring. It's just some of it's not quite right. We need to refine it. So that's why, and I don't know why I whistle every time I go with the, <laughs> just this thing. Oh, we're going to find out where the problem is. That's what we're doing. Looking for our inefficiencies, eliminating them. So um, keep working on it. And as, as uh, Frank said before, he goes, the people just don't want to do the repetitions of pure process. They just want to play the notes. As soon as you think about playing the note, you've flipped over into 1.0 pathway. All right. And there's, there's merit in doing that because you can't just practice the process stuff and then go out and expect to play gigs. You've still got to maintain what you've got to, to play. But someone said earlier, I feel like if I um, keep reinforcing 1.0, the 2.0 work that I'm doing will disappear. And I'm going, no, you can live in one apartment block and build another apartment block. Just because you live in one doesn't mean you sleep there the night and the work that you did on the new one disappears overnight because you're sleeping in apartment block one. No, just live there while you have to and keep building apartment block number two, the five star penthouse resort. Keep building that every day. You're not going to be able to live there for a while, but when you can, you've got a new, a new place to live. You know, you've got new pathways. You can do both. Um, Ike, you had your hand up. You have. Got your hand up. Nope, oh, you've disappeared. I have my hand up. Hi there. How are you? I can see I'm you. I'm doing well. That's great, mate. You can, if you can hear me fine. I can hear you fine and see you fine. Excellent. Well, uh, I'm glad to join you guys a little bit late, and I've learned quite a bit in the 30 minutes or an hour I've, I've been here, and just wanted to say thanks. You and I... I uh, communicated through emails a couple of years ago, and I was active in your WinWorks program, and it really changed my my playing, and I've just been nodding my head a lot listening <laughs> to folks talk. I really appreciated what Frank was saying about uh, trusting the process and so forth, and, and just the repetitive process portion of it. Um, Brett, you alluded to meditation, and I, I know I've said to you, Greg, when I was starting a couple of years ago, that all this stuff that you were doing reminded me of my meditative practice. And I find that it really helps when I do the process to just approach it as a meditation and to not really associate it so much with performance at all. But it's just a, a, a practice of just trying to to be clear and really open up the body's concert hall. Love it. Uh, I wanted to say thank you. Um, I uh, You can see behind me for two years, this has been shining at me. My daily checklist. One, remind yourself it's new. With intent towards better, there's no one way, but there are pitfalls to avoid. Two, practice like a virtuoso and document it charts exclamation point three always towards efficiency can i get one percent more sound out of the air column my body by doing one percent less work so these are reminders that uh you've inspired and these are awesome. my your words paraphrased yep and uh in the top corner i think this is the most important thing is I don't allow any tension in my practice room, right? I this is a place for kind practice, so I have that written there. So it's, I'm gentle with myself, and I, uh, I I push myself, but I uh, I have a sense of humor about it all. Love um, it. So <clears throat> I think you're really on to some things. I really appreciated what you were saying, Daniel, about the singing, and Greg, you with the singing. Uh, see, uh, inspired me to go off into the internet, and I actually found some videos where they took a camera and ran it through someone's nose. Have you seen those videos at all? I've seen the ones where they look down at the at the vocal yeah the vocal yeah, vocal cords. So that really 
yeah it really helped me oh. because you were explaining you know okay what you're trying to do is have the aperture be like the vocal cords and uh seeing that that's what's actually happening in our throats yeah. really helped me quite a bit so that that was uh yeah and one other thing I wanted to throw out, I, I know this is Captain Obvious, and I'm sure everybody who's here on the call knows this, but uh, YouTube pitch adjusts. So when you slow a video down, it yep. still stays the same pitch. And that's a really, really uh, positive part of my practice. So if, I've, if I'm looking at a video of yours, Greg, yep. and I want to uh, slow it down because I'm not able to take it at tempo, that really helps out a lot. That's cool. So. Right. Mostly, I just wanted to chime in and say thank you so much, Greg. And I, I hope to rejoin the community. And, and thanks for doing this video today. Great. Well, this, as I said, it's the new normal. Yeah. If I, I, I need to, to be here. I, I, I didn't think that I was going to have to facilitate the conversation. But it, as you say, it, 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 and I'm more than happy to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll be there doing it. So any any kind of things that get put onto the forum or i'm going to put things out there and i'm going to be emailing getting the communication happening so if people don't like again i'm i'm greg 3.0 <laughs> and i mean this greg 1.0 was my original plan greg 2.0 was chop change learning all this stuff continuing to develop it but uh, let's just say greg 1.0 greg 2.0 greg <laughs> Greg 3.0 is running how learning how to do all this properly. Because as I said last night, when I go to press an email to the database, I literally cringe. I hate doing it. I, I just don't want to be there doing it. I don't want to put myself onto people. That has to change. So if people don't like getting the emails from now because I'm trying to inspire and help, unsubscribe. Because... <laughs> I got to do it. I got to do it. So I'm going to be sending stuff out and helping offering things and, and, and doing the groups and doing these forum chats. So there'll be more, uh, information coming. And it, again, it, it's not the way that I'm wired. I'm, I'm the guy that got information would go and practice in the practice room. So I don't want to get in people's way and, and push and ask and tell, I just assume that they're going to do the work and do it correctly. That's not the case. So. Oh, your evolution uh, and example is fantastic and it inspires me. Thank you. Thank you. I very much appreciate it and great to chat again. Yeah. Um, I reckon I'm going to wrap it up now. Uh, it's been really exciting. I get more contentment out of this than any gig. I've had my gig days and love performing, traveled all over the world playing and all different sorts of players, all, you know, Carnegie Hall was terrific and in different countries everywhere and i get no more contentment than than talking to well you, you saw if you're here at the start wayne bergeron jumped on and said g'day and we had a good chat for a while and sean royce an amazing trombone player from uh from carlsbad came on and shared his his, his story and everything it's terrific my beautiful friend max ganano here from philadelphia pittsburgh pennsylvania excuse me I, you know, sorry. <laughs> okay, at the right state. He was he was actually here this morning, six a.m. your time, and he's done the afternoon session. Glutton for punishment. <laughs> so, and I've known Max for a long, long time, and and um, it's great, it's great stuff. So, thank you for uh, for being involved, everyone. Um, oh, I've just seen an admit, so I'll let Ted in to say goodbye. Um, I've just got a couple of messages here. Greg, this is great. I'm um, sorry I missed last night. Sir. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Anyway, bye. Catch you next time. There will be a next time. Um, it's time to to sign out. So Ted, you just joined in. Um, thank you for doing that. But we're about to we're about to finish up. But I'm doing this again next week, every every Sunday, uh, your time. So Sunday and Monday Australian time. And please jump on the forum get the conversations going, help each other out, you know, I'll do what I can. But my experience is different to your experiences is different to Michael's experience, which is different to Pat's and Daniel's experience, which is different to Matt's and Brett's. 
we all have things to share. We can all learn from each other. I'm having trouble with this. Oh, well, what I did was this. What I did was this. Oh, I tried that. That didn't work for me. Okay, well, we'll try something else. But if we've got that conversation happening, we're all headed in the right direction. And, and I just love it because I go to the point I demonstrated last night, one of my focal dystonia students, I invented a mouthpiece mask. <laughs> right? You might not know about focal dystonia, but let me tell you, it's an incredibly destructive condition. And I needed this person to have the rim on their lips without arms moving because the contact on the lips creates, uh, triggers negative reactions. The movement of the arm creates negative reactions. Taking a breath creates negative reactions. So you can imagine what picking up a trumpet and trying to play does to the central nervous system, fight and flight kicks in and they almost fall off their chair. It's horrendous. So one of the things I needed was like, we need to eliminate arm movement and we need to eliminate and desensitize the chops. Simple, let's get the rim and have it stuck on our mouth and walk around for hours with the rim. The body all of a sudden's not worried about the breath, not worried about the contact, no arm movement. So then we can focus on the arm movement on its own. There's no limit to what we can do in order to train the brain. We've got to trick the brain is what we've got to do to create new neural pathways. And there's no, there's a, infinite possibilities to get the result if we're prepared to think laterally and try things that might seem really stupid, really dumb. That's why would you do that? I'll just pick up the trumpet and blow it. Great. I've been doing that. It's not working. <laughs> right? So we've got to come up with strategies to try and create new pathways to get better, different results and not be threatened by difference, not be threatened by you did what he said, what you tried, what, there's so much stigma and ego attached to pedagogy. There shouldn't be, it should be a communication and trying different things out. You never know what might work. It's, um, it's an extraordinary thing that we're, we're working with. And at the end of the day, it's the learning process. It's got nothing to do with trumpet. Trumpet's just our vice for learning to train the body to do something else. And we train the body to do something else based on the feeling and the understanding of the mechanics. And so that goes, hence the left-handed golf experiment. Doesn't matter whether you're a darts player or I went to say skydiver the other night, but that doesn't fly. They say, if, if at first you don't succeed, don't try skydiving. <laughs> I laughed, that was up on, I'm not religious and I love, you know, religions go religion. Great, all over the place. I'm not religious, but that was on the uniting church up on their sign as you drive past if at first you don't succeed don't try skydiving and i took a photo of it because it's so true love it um unless there's anyone's got a burning question uh or anything michael let's get in touch and have a quick chat and have a look at a couple of things because oh needs to happen um we'll get you we'll get you there all right thanks so much no, no worries. It'll just shoot me an email and we'll, we'll tee something up. And if there's no other, other questions or anything, we'll, um, we'll, well thank you again, Greg. Really Have appreciate it. No worries, Daniel. Great. Thanks, to see Greg. You. Pleasure guys. All Thanks, the best. Everyone. Um, see you next Greg, week. Thank you again to as Please. well, your comments on, uh, the stage fright, because I'm fighting with that myself. It's, it's a, another big topic that I'm more than happy to, you know, get you guys on and we'll, we'll we'll do a chat you know did you see my on my facebook page the chat that i had with mark bain during i the just said it but i haven't had a chance to go over it all right well I've, I've cut it up into three different bits um so I'll, I'll put the youtube link uh up on my facebook page and in the windworks members page um and then i'll i i haven't um i haven't done the other two i've broken up into 40 minute bits because we went for two hours um so i will put the other two up in the next couple of weeks and so they'll all be there so you can do it in bits but it's a really really super duper important topic uh and it's everywhere and i used to battle with it myself and the humming michael and daniel and brett i cannot express the importance of this Mm. 
you can, it's like a fire extinguisher putting out a fire. You can feel it saturate the anxiety. It's a wild thing that I found by accident, just reminding myself to play efficiently and all of a sudden the calm came over. I was literally walking down Swanson Street in Melbourne on my way to the concert hall to play with Melbourne Symphony, the lead trumpet part of West Side Story. Google, Google, Google. Mm. Oh, that's better. Side of stage, about to go on. Mm. Sometimes it might take 30 seconds. Sometimes it might be one second. Ah, oh, everything's cool. I know I can do it. I've got the chops. I know what it sounds like. I can read the notes. Just put the sand into the room, <laughs> right? On stage, about to go. There's a high F sharp for about 300 beats <laughs> with a decrescendo on high F sharp with a decrescendo. You don't want to have anxiety in the body trying to overcome that anxiety by being engaged and try and play a high F sharp and then do a decrescendo on it. That's not going to work, right? So uh, just before the take, mm, I'm feeling good. There's nothing more exciting than feeling confident and sitting there and blazing something over the top of a hundred piece orchestra. It's really fun. There's nothing worse than having fear and sitting there going, oh God, shit, ah, there's nothing worse. And I've lived both. <laughs> so we can all get ourselves into a mindset of, of course I can do that. Here's a line. I, I seriously, dudes, you're in, I could keep talking for hours about this stuff. With my dystonia students, there's so much doubt and hesitation let me tell performance anxiety is remedial entry level compared to um, dystonia. It's terrifying what dystonia is, but performance anxiety is part of it. So I have this, can you sit there and do such and such? Like take a breath and hum mm, without a reaction happening. And I get this. Mm, yeah, doesn't fill me with confidence. <laughs> so the response must be no thought. Of course I can. Can you sit there and hum for me without having any reaction? Of course I can. Right? Without any thought about the fact that there might be a reaction, we don't let that into the mind. And there is a real power in saying, of course I can. Brett, can you get on stage at the concert hall and and play Cherokee and enjoy yourself? Of course I can. I beat you to it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't think. Of course I can do that. I've got the chops. I've got the music. But when we think about it, the 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 fight and flight brain goes, um, oh yeah, well I, I can. I know the song and stuff, but I might be nervous on this or that. And starts to go around circles. Start wheels start turning in the brain. We don't let them. Of course I can. There's power in saying that, right? And so the humming, I know that I can play the part. I know what it sounds like. I know what it what it um, feels like in my practice room. I'm not going to fight the environment. I know what it feels like. I don't expect to hear the same thing on stage when I'm playing because there's a bunch of other people. That mumbo solo in West Side Story, it's the <clears throat> gymnasium scene. That's full on, loud, high, super exposed. We get up there and all you've got behind you, gong, 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 timpanis and snares and xylophones and so much noise. And I'm playing and it's literally... Um, I can hear that now. It's loud. <laughs> right? Playing with the Melbourne Symphony percussion section, I couldn't hear a note. Couldn't hear a note. So what do you want to do? You want to blow louder. Thankfully, I'm too smart for that. Don't fight the environment. 
I know what it feels like. I know that I can play it. I know what it sounds like. Replicate what it, the way I'd play it here. Don't go into um, playing harder to try and compensate for the environment. Don't do that. <laughs> this is a lesson that took a long time to learn, but we- That's a good well. lesson. It's really important, really important. It's hard to do. You have to make a conscious effort to go, don't fight it, don't try and hear. You're not gonna hear it the way that you hear it at home. Don't try, it's not gonna happen. All you're gonna do is play inefficiently and run the battery out faster. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot in it. And that's where the humming again comes in. Mm, the very first note that I just played then requires no body activation because the pitch is <laughs> right. The body did not engage one bit, not one twinge of any muscle below the neck whatsoever. <coughs> That's all from mouth compression. The only reason we use the body is to keep the notes longer. <laughs> right? Because we can't play. Not going to work. So we've got to have the flow from the body. Approach to it. Michael, oh, <laughs> they don't seem to work together, do they? Psychologically, they, they do not add up, right? What we see and the, the assumption that the brain makes watching people play versus the possibility are very, 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 very different. And that's because I was to kill myself. I just figured out that I can mute learning. Love it. I just figured out that I can mute microphones. There you go. Awesome. Uh, any thoughts, questions, criticisms, queries, theories, stock market tips? I think I'm going to go have some coffee. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just my first cup of coffee in the day. <laughs> And, and, Grant, and, thank you again so much. Uh, this is great uh, because the stage fright's a big one for me right now. Uh, I have a pretty low self. I can sing anywhere, but playing the trumpet in front of people has been a real struggle. And I've bummed. What's really tough is in the Bay Area, I have ran into either top jazz players, which are really intolerant if you're amateur playing on the trumpet. The, they love me as I come to a singer, but everything else, not so great. And I'm going to revisit it. So I am coming back to approach a couple of those musicians and you know the stage fright is a huge one because i have completely bombed you know you've been totally doing this great in your room and all that and all of a sudden you play in front of a bunch of people and you fall completely apart and if you're not breathing you can't play the horn you know? right it's all about the breath and the hum you hum mate that's straight away is going to fix you great but... tip. i didn't know that so that yep. i will do i hum, I hum like a my normal, but thinking about the calming down before the performance, I, I will do that yeah. as my repertoire from this point forward. And get confidence in your sound. Don't try and play a million notes. Don't try and be Chet Baker or Lee Morgan or Maynard Ferguson or any of that. Play with a sound that you love and want to share. Then you've got confidence that I have a nice sound and my message is valid. You don't need to be playing a million notes. You don't play two notes played nicely is far more uh easy to appreciate than too many notes that don't sound good and played with ego and you can hear ego in people's playing as well but if you're playing a sincere message with a beautiful tone you will uh get accolades and it's not about the accolades but you will enjoy the process people will enjoy listening other dudes again it doesn't matter what standard play you are if i see you know someone who's not a pro trumpet player get up and play and they play within themselves with a nice message and confidence in what they've got to offer 
fantastic. And keep in mind also, they've done studies. 99.9999876% of the world's population do not give a shit about trumpet. <laughs> they don't care, right? The most, the most critical people of trumpet players are trumpet players. And the last person that we're performing for is another trumpet player. They don't, it doesn't matter how good you are. Most trumpet players will go, oh, I've, I could have done that better. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it like that. I would have done it like this. You're not performing for other trumpet players. You're performing for people that are coming out to see a gig to listen to music. They want to hear you play your, your voice. So get confident in your voice. He was just middle G. Oh, and you play it with passion. They're going to love it. Simple. Keep it simple, stupid. That's the term I use for myself. It's right. the just beginning parts for me at this point. I was outside out in a park uh, playing uh, the flugelhorn, which I'm sure you're well aware that you can play it only in warm weather. <laughs> Otherwise, it just won't stay in tune no matter what you do. <laughs> and so I'm playing, playing it. And I'm doing this. I decided, well, what the heck? This isn't what I, this would be on the trumpet, but I don't have my trumpet with me. So I, I did a, by my lead from, um, I only have eyes from you, uh, Frank Sinatra, Count Basie for a horse circle musical first version. And, you know, I didn't realize people were out in the park and I finished playing it, singing it, because I sing that and play it. Well, I finished playing the thing and the people completely lit up. It was just like, I got, I got this huge box. Oh, where are they? Okay, cool. And they, they would start leaving. They were like, you're great. We love what you're doing. So it's that encouragement, you know, it's just the pay there's you know I've, i fight with patience i'm sure everybody else does um but that's a huge one for me and the stage fright is getting less but it's you know my biggest fear is starting to reapproach these top musicians and i'm just like just it's just another day it's like you're playing you're relaxed you're in your room you're you know, in your practice room like you said but the humming thing i will do that from this point forward i didn't know about that Awesome. And, and also that experience in the park, put on your mind's feature wall and refer back to it. How did you feel? Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy the sensation of playing? Yes. Did you like people going, that sounded great? Yes. So you've had an experience, a real life experience that happened. So store it and refer to it. That's why I do what I do. You're sitting there worried about ringing these other trumpet players and being around them. That's fear. There's nothing healthy about that. There's everything healthy about referring back to that beautiful moment that you have and go, right, ah, that's what it's all about. Let's do that again. I've got this gig coming up and I have to play whatever song it is. Righto, think back. What did it look like? How, what was my vibe when I was doing that? This is conscious construction of your new, you know, 2.0 performance psychology is what do I want? If you can't visualize what you want at the end of that gig, I want to walk off feeling like I did when I left that park, right? That's what you want. You've got to create that. You've got to visualize it and go, right, what steps do I need to put into place to get when I leave stage after that next gig to feel like I did in the park? Well, I need to enjoy what I'm playing. I need to be free of any concerns. Great. How do we build that? What are my concerns? What are my blockages? Greg, that prick on lead trumpet, he's such a, you know, and he's scary and he doesn't like me and I'm a hack and he thinks he's awesome and uh, it's terrifying. Well, you ignore that when you're not playing for him, you don't need his blooming pat on the back. It'd be nice, but that's just ego. And don't forget that ego, your ego, is what's being battered here. You know, that's where the anxiety comes from. There's a degree of my identity is going to be threatened here because of what might happen. So we've got to recce call it out for what it is and go, well, at the end of the day, I'm only capable of doing such. So don't try and outplay yourself. Don't try and sound like anyone else. Sound like you. So what did you sound like in the park? What did it feel like, look like, sound like? Let's replicate that. That was fun. And you'd be amazed if you get on there with that calm psychology and just deliver that. We're not saving lives. We're not saving lives. We're just playing a bit of music. You get up there and go, hmm, oh, that's right. Da -da -de -de, da -da -de 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 -de. 
or whatever, whatever. Love the experience and everyone will love it along with you. It's very easy to say this and then when in the heat of the moment you're on stage, yeah. you know, environment changes, but you can live in that environment in the room that you're sitting in now. And if you prepare yourself for it in the right way, you will take it onto the stage. It's the way it works. The invitation, the invitation, yours is an invitation to be chilled. And if you live that chilled psychology and whenever you feel those negative, we scud missile negative messages, because I believe there is a finite amount of negative messages. Because if you keep just shooting them down, the minute that you hear one of those messages come into your mind going, yeah, but what about, ah, 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 I see you. I see what you're doing. No, we're not having that conversation anymore. And then it's gone. And all of a sudden you go to pick up your trumpet. Oh, remember that time you played that? Ah, stop that wrong note. We, we don't identify with a wrong note or a bad gig. It doesn't define us. We learn from bad gigs and wrong notes. It's all positive. So these messages keep coming. You translate them. You look at them. You call them out and go, no, nah, not getting involved with that. Hmm. What's my message? What did it look like in the park? And the, the, the more you shoot those messages down, they get tired because it takes energy for the, the fight and flight nervous system to keep coming up with this stuff. The amygdala, trauma, PTSD is <laughs> to a degree, right? So it, it will run out of steam when you, the conscious mind is the powerful part of it that can control that. So you use the power of the conscious mind to go, no, we're not having that conversation anymore. I can do this. I've got the ability. I've got the desire. I know what it sounds like, looks like, feels like. I'm going to do that. And as soon as a negative message comes, ah, no, we're not having that conversation. I love what I do. Look what I did in the park. This is hard work, but it works. <laughs> over and over and over. Just monitor yourself. You've just got this message system, this program playing on repeat in your mind. It's there. It's part of your circuitry. My whole thing is about changing your circuitry, changing the messaging. And so you've got to be proactive and use the power of your conscious mind. Do you want to enjoy the gig? Yes. Am I capable of doing it? Yes. Right. Good. What's getting in the way? This, 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 and this. Right. Oh, let's get rid of them. Oh, it's all very logical. <laughs> just takes work. You'll get there. Stay in touch, please. Let's talk it through. And I'm happy to help. Thank you so much. Right. I'm 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 sick of my voice. I'm I'm gonna go. See you later. Thanks for joining us. Serene. The right pronunciation. Thank you. Thanks for coming. See you later, guys. Um Ted, sorry, um I can't see you. That's okay, but you um we're doing this every week. So if you want to join in, please get on the forum at WimWorks, put stuff in, let's talk about issues, whatever. Anyway, I could go on and on. I won't. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank, Thank you, Greg. Good on you guys.